in the spirit asking the Lord to visit us. Go ahead and pray everywhere. We are praying in the spirit. We came here to shift things over our lives and over our destinies. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One more prayer point and then we'll be seated. Lord, the dimension that I must shift into in the spirit, the grace to make it happen, let it come upon me tonight. Lift your voice and let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we pray in the name of Jesus that you will minister to our hearts. We thank you for shout. We bless you because you are faithful. Thank you for all the men and women you have gathered from this city. And Lord, together as a family of faith, we have decided to spend time lifting your name and your praise tonight. And Father, we pray that within the few minutes we have, speak to us and change our lives. Speak to us and change our lives. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your royal majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. Done before your royal majesty, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords, your royal majesty, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords, your royal majesty. My crown before the highest royalty, and I am undone before the royal majesty. Yapone Nakao, Sujata.
I saw people's clothes while I sat there. You notice all the time I've been quiet, just sitting there. And I saw people being undressed and giving new garments. And these garments were not made of earthly material. And I just sat quietly. I wasn't looking at the stage. I was looking at the vision. What is this that God is showing me? And then I began to see people. The garment will be put. And the, for everyone, the garment was the exact size. It's a mystery. The, it didn't matter. The garment will come and fit your size immediately. It was taken just like a linen. It was not put on by saying you put your hand. As soon as it was brought to you, it just stick, stuck to your body. That's what I saw. And when God begins to reveal these things, it is not only a revelation of a new dimension, but it's also a revelation of a mighty deliverance. Were you not told that praise is not just a song, it's also a garment? That there is something in the spirit called the garment of praise. And that the moment you have the privilege of wearing that garment, heaviness will leave. That the garment of praise is the antidote to the spirit of heaviness. Not the song of praise. Not the chorus of praise. More than a song, it can be a garment. Are we together now? And so when I saw it, I began to rejoice in my spirit. Because I said the goal for shout has been achieved. If God is taking away garments, giving men beauty for ashes, He says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. I like your heart to be sensitive within these few minutes. Great men and women, mistress in the spirit, they have come to lift us in worship and i'm not going to take too long here i just want to introduce something like a drug into our lives and trust god that within the few minutes that we have that god will do wonders in our lives are we in agreement 121 psalms i just want to open us up to one or two things and then we'll pray jesus Psalm 121. I'll read from my Bible. Okay, I see it projected. It says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. It says, From where cometh my help? That rendition um, is not accurate as presented. By, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's not accurate as presented by the King James Version. Because it looks like it's just a straight statement. But the context there is, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. It's supposed to stop there. Then the next verse is a question. Whence cometh my help? And then he allows the listener to suggest the various platforms from which help comes. And then eventually he answers that my help cometh from the Lord which made the heavens and the earth. Now, please look up. For you to understand this scripture, let's go back to verse 1. I want to establish just a few things and then we'll pray. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. I hope you realize that in the dealings of God with the nation of Israel, um, there was a technology of deliverance that had to do with them rising to the hills. Are we together now? That same formation was used in the building of castles and palaces of kings. When you notice the ancient structures, kings never built their houses and palaces in the valley or on the plain land. They usually would look for a very high altitude. And it was supposed to be a system of protection and, del and deliverance. So that if you wanted to attack a king, you would need to walk that hill 
and before you got there the watchmen who stood upon the gates would have been able to detect you there was no way you could maneuver the hill was too far for you to just get your way there are we together now now in ancient times listen carefully most palaces had almost like a convocation square they had secret chambers beneath the palace or um, extensions behind the palace and usually what would happen is that if the citizens of that land were now being overwhelmed at the beck and call of those we call the knights the sent one the king will pass a decree and certain tribes whose relevance cannot be eroded will be asked to come and hide within those chambers are you getting the point now so it was a system of protection and deliverance the hills every time you began to pursue someone and he climbed the hill and got into their palace or their chamber of hiding then you knew you were in trouble so it was the hill had always been identified as a place where God seemed to have a covenant of deliverance with the people remember prophet Elijah when it was time for him to judge the prophets of Baal he said let's go up the mountain to the point that the enemies of the people of God, the nation of Israel, came up with a formula that God was only the God of the mountains. And God had to explain that, no, I'm also the God of the valley. Are we together now? So the psalmist is saying, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. But he's, he's trying to correct something. He's saying, you all think that the hill is where protection comes from. The hill itself has limitations that the hill does not protect by itself. But that much more than the hill, there is a place of safety. Remember, he's talking about help here. Everybody say help. The entire subject is about men being helped. So the question is, where is the location where men find help? Are we still together now? So he's suggesting alternatives and he's saying, I will lift up my eyes to heels. The question, from whence cometh my help? Hold on. It's a very personal question because there are many people who get their help from many places. On earth here, there are many options for help. I hope you know. Men can help men. Do we agree? Yes money can help men certain positions and offices can help men and he's saying my help not our help i don't know where you get yours from but my help cometh from the lord my help cometh not from a man listen carefully my help cometh not from a government not from a system my help comes from the Lord this is his his confidence is that my help comes from a source that I trust a source that is not limited please just follow me I'm establishing something you see my brothers and my sisters your confidence in life is not just dependent on the help you receive but the strength of the helper are you getting what I'm saying now I have seen helpers who also need help themselves. Now, when your helper need help, he, he needs help, you are in trouble. Because it then means that you must also be a victim of his limitation. So here the psalmist is clarifying something. He said, my help, although I'm a king, my help does not come from the hill. Don't be deceived by the fact that my palace is situated in a high, a high altitude. So that you think that the palace and all the secret chambers are where my help comes from. He says, my help cometh from the Lord. Are you blessed? Say, my help comes from the Lord. One more time, say, my help comes from the Lord. 
I just want to show you very quickly. Maybe we'll just pick one of them for tonight. How God helps men. Because we're talking about the subject of help here. That men can be assisted in this life. Nobody. Ah. Listen. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence my help comes from. That means nobody does anything unusual on earth by himself. The moment you see any dimension that is extra human, that means that man has outsourced assistance from a dimension. Where the help came from is not the issue. But one fact is guaranteed tonight that men do not rise by themselves. It's impossible. Every one of these people you saw singing here and worshipping the Lord, none of them were born that way. That means every one of them has created a system of outsourcing intelligence from a dimension that brought the songs that we now enjoy. Are, are we together? Listen, I want you to settle it tonight that there is a level in the spirit where men cannot rise beyond there must be a system of help which becomes your advantage that lifts you to that level are we together now divination and occultism can provide a kind a type a dimension of help listen very carefully we have seen people and the bible is very vocal about this that people went to consult with dark powers and although these powers were not consistent with God it seemed to provide some kinds of advantage your strength in this kingdom is predicated upon whatever supplies an advantage for you listen very carefully so that we will stop wasting our time you will never rise unassisted is against the law of greatness. Greatness is like when you watch a politician rise, that politician knows that until someone holds your hand and lifts you, you may never rise to certain levels. In life, we all know this. That rising in life is tied to the hand that holds you. Please listen. You have to get, you get the message that I'm teaching you tonight. Your life will change in a way that will surprise you. Are we together now? So he's saying, from whence cometh my help? It's like you are throwing the question to everyone. Where does your help come from? And he says, the help comes from the intelligence of my father. Congratulations. Where does your help come from? My help comes from the connection of my elder brother. Where does your help come from? My help comes from the, the, the volume of my educational accolades. Where does your help come from? My help comes from whatever attributes that I think are an advantage. And he says, I've listened to you all. Wonderful. But my help my help comes from the Lord and then he says the maker because there are many people that are called Lord on earth so he said let me clarify this Lord I'm talking about is the maker of the heavens and the earth speak to somebody and say men can be assisted say it again that your assistance defines your advantage in this life The Bible says how God anointed, assisted Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power. Even Jesus was assisted. Is God speaking to us please? Woe betide a man who is on his own in this life. No matter who you are, you have signed up for a life of pain and tragedy so i want to very quickly help us to see the systems that god has put in place where men can find an advantage because there are 
pastors listen politicians listen great people listen nobody rises by good intention you must be able to tap into the advantages that are enshrined in your work and many people have though weak in themselves like you watch how many of you have watched wrestling where you see a tag team and they beat the living daylight of one weak person but his partner is so powerful and strong and all that guy needs to do is stretch himself as far and just touch someone and a huge guy jumps in and in five minutes both of them leave the trophy together you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands impossible becomes possible Comes possible when you hold my hands. Impossible becomes possible. So I need help. You need help. This project could not have happened by the might of a man. There was an assistance. Every time you see unusual results much more than the object that represents the face of that success vet carefully and you will find the system of assistance that has been coordinated to back that man when david went to fight goliath saul was surprised saul said david come <clears throat> why are you this bold and and saul began to consult with his mind and he says ah what family do you come from there, you have to find a way of convincing me that you can take Goliath down. And Saul said, David said, I'm not going just by my intelligence. It's not just the sling. There is an advantage. I have mastered the art of invoking that advantage. I can stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, respect me. I know I will kill you, but respect me. Am I a dog? That you come to me with your sling and he said ah goliath if you had known he said goliath let me tell you how i will kill you not just that i will kill you this is how it will happen step a you see this sling is going to take you down i will use your own sword and cut your head and give it to the birds and goliath said this is interesting he said you come against me with your spheres but i come against you in the name there is an advantage goliath are you daft are you not a warrior do small people challenge you are you are you not smart enough to know that a young teenager like me should not be coming on his own and when he took that sling goliath died since Goliath did not die when the sling hit him. No. No. Imagine the integrity of the Lord of Sabaoth waiting at that battlefront. The invisible forces coordinating themselves together. Please listen. And when he threw that sling, it didn't matter where the sling went to, Goliath would have still died. It was not the flawlessness of the aiming. It was the fact that he had died. Once upon a time, in Joshua chapter 6, the people of God came to a city. Please give it to us. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 1. The Bible lets us know that now Jericho, a very strange city called Jericho, are we together? Was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Jericho was a very strong city listen carefully the bible says five chariots could stand upon jericho that means even if you inverted it it was still a fence a building that five chariots can stand in are you safe even if you invert it how do you break the building they had studied the dealings of god with this small nation called israel 
they would come and you will vow that you would defeat them until you see the head of your king on their hands. And so they shut the gate. The Bible says none went out and none went in. Let's read on. It's a long reading. Let's see how far God will help us. And the Lord said to Joshua, look at how God talks. I love my God. God never talks like he's talking to a man. He talks like he's talking to himself. He's this sin destiny of someone who is already with his fortification yet god is talking as if the people are disarmed he says the lord said to joshua see i have what given into your hand jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor listen let me teach you something please look at me if god looks at you and tells this man of god and says i have given you europe don't just say amen like amen by faith no start drawing near to say lord show me the provision you have put because every time god speaks he has constructed the system of assistance and the advantage listen god never speaks until he finishes so when god was saying pastor peter put shout already he had ordained the sound guys Already he knew you would come. When he found out, God vets his credibility first before speaking. So if he dare speaks, there is a system of advantage already in his word. It is our responsibility by the wisdom of the spirit to begin to search it out. And the Lord said, I have given you, even their mighty men of valor, verse 3, Let's see how far we can read them. I just want to pick something there. Okay, I'll read from here. I'm not sure that... Okay. And ye shall compass the city. Now, notice. Are you seeing that every time God gives you a promise, you must stay there and wait till the strategy that defines your advantage is given? Many believers receive promises. God will say, go to Mina, raise me a people. They say, thank you, and they go away. And they suffer like God didn't call them. You would have still stayed. What is the strategy for the assignment? The strategy is where the advantage is. You don't assume strategies. Battles are only won, not because victory was prophesied, but strategies were received. You shall compass the city. That's the strategy. All ye men of war and go round about the city. Verse 4. Once. Thus shall you do six days. Everybody say strategy. Say my help. Say my strategy. My help cometh from the Lord. So they are receiving this now. God is telling them. In six days, you will go around that city only once. Don't worry about what you are seeing. Just do what I told you to do. It's a divine strategy. And then it says, on the seventh day, you will not go around just once. You will go around seven times. God, why? It is my strategy. I'm the helper. You don't ask a helper questions. You receive. A helper does not need help. A helper is trying to bring you to his realm of possibilities. So you follow his instructions. God is about to show men how to conquer impossible situations. Remember the Bible says that all the scriptures that are written there are for our learning. That we understand how God works with men. Is God blessing someone tonight? I can tell you why many of us have had delayed prophecy. Is because when we received the prophecy, we did not sustain the staying power to receive the system of advantage. You use someone's system of advantage, it will not work. Walking around Jericho never happened in the Bible again because it was a strategy revealed for the moment. Once upon a time, they got to the Red Sea, a strategy that became their advantage. Moses, stretch your rod and part it. Joshua got there again. He said, this time, uh -uh, ask the priest to come and start walking. And when Jesus came, Jesus didn't part the sea. He walked on it. Listen, 
So, the fact that God moved in a way yesterday, don't assume that's the strategy for today. He said, give us this day. Every day you must wait. Lord, what is the strategy for this level, for this dimension? I use strategy X, Y, Z and it brought 200 members. You can't assume that's what will give you this. I use strategy A, B, C. It made me a commissioner or it made me a banker. It made me a manager. I will still use it and then get another thing. Not so. The things of the spirit are not like that. The Bible says, just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, nor the way of the wind, so you do not know the way of the Lord. The methodology of God is something that only his intelligence can explain. Is God speaking to us now? Remember, we are talking about help. Don't forget the subject. What are we talking about? How men can be given assistance to rise beyond levels and dimensions that ordinary they should not get to. That's why you look at people, my brothers and my sisters, and you are angry. You know their success is not fair. And the people tell you, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you that it's not fair. I know I'm not supposed to be here, but I was able to route my destiny through a system of advantage. Kai, when you look at the life of a man who has gotten the blueprint, the system of help for his destiny, that life is fearful. You will only complain and argue to your peril. Nothing, no power in existence has the capability to stop such a person. God is a God of systems. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. But don't be confused. My help comes from the Lord. So I must understand how he helps. Are we together now? Let me just show you one way that God helps men. And then we'll pray. Can you pray in the spirit in one minute? My spirit is fired up. There is a system of advantage given to the saints by which we find help. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3. This is one of the mysteries, Pastor, that the Lord showed me. Proverbs chapter 3. Please don't forget this. As simple as it is, it will make your life a wonder. Proverbs chapter 3. From verse 5. This is what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart please listen god is about to show you a revelation it says and lean not on your own understanding stop don't try to tell god you have understanding he's saying if you need my help trust me with all your heart number two i know you are brilliant but when it comes to the matters of advantage in destiny lean not on your own understanding ready next verse Verse 6 says, in all your ways, this is the mystery, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he leaves you with a promise that he will direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own understanding. He says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. The key is in verse 6. Listen. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That means that there are times, pastor, no matter how accurate we are, no matter how discerning we are, God already knew that there are times in our lives where we stand. It's not just that you don't know how to open a door. There is no door. You found yourself in a situation where there is no door at all. If you see a door, you look for a key. But if you see a wall, where, what do you look for? Follow me to Jericho. 
let me show you how we bring Jericho down. <laughs> when you see a door, you need a key. But when you see a wall, you don't need a key. I will show you what you need. Because doors are real. Gates are real. Walls are also real. So God showed you how to navigate them. When you see a gate, there is what you can do. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. When you see doors, he will give you the keys to open. But what happens when a wall stands before you that does not have any entrance and five chariots can stand on it? It's not a little fence that you just push and put your hand. It's a, it's, the fence is a wall. Is God speaking to us now? Because if you do not understand the system by which men command victory in this kingdom, you will talk a lot of things your results cannot defend. There is too much claiming of realities and possibilities that we have not sustained the technology, the advantage that makes us to defend it. So we can show from scripture that it's true God can open doors. It's true God can give speed. It's true God can do this. We have several propositions of what God can do. We write books about them. Nothing is wrong. Except that when it comes to validating those things with our testimonies, oftentimes we do not have a testimony. So over time, our environment are used to our falsehood. They no longer take us serious. When you say God can do something, we just dance it and say yes. But in reality, they say finish your nonsense and leave me. My help. When you stand to see me and see a result that is not human, don't try to argue. It was not by the hands of man. My help. I have mastered the art of outsourcing an advantage from another dimension. That in partnership with that help, you can produce results that should not happen. It says, if it is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous. You don't clap for a man for walking because it's human to walk. But when men fly, you must clap because you have outsourced another intelligence that is not given to men. I'm not going to clap for you just for walking well. No. But when you fly, no. Let's go to verse 14. Same Joshua chapter 6. I want to hurry up because we're going to pray. Joshua chapter 6. If you can give it to me, media, let's go to verse 14. The Bible says, And the second day they compassed the city once and returned to the camp. We're reading down to verse 16. Go ahead. So they did six days. Please follow closely. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early. Uh huh. About the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass, listen carefully, at the seventh time when the priests uh -huh, blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, talk to me. One more time. Hold on. Where musicians, the Bible says, they were priests, so there were others who were holding horns. It was not a program, it was a strategy. It says, When you stand and find out there is no provision for a key, stop looking for principles. At that point, there is a key cannot open that door. When you stand there, it says, Shout, hold on, shout with a reason. That is the reason for the Lord. Go ahead, hath given you. You don't shout because you are excited. You shout as an act of faith. For the Lord has given you. Leave the city. The Lord can give you anything. 
Shout for the Lord has given you the victory. Shout for the Lord has given you. So what we call shout is not just a, an expression of joy. Uh -uh. It's a spiritual strategy enshrined in God's intelligence. It's a way marked out by his wisdom as a system that brings walls down. Are we together? And the Bible says, when you read on, that they shouted, and Jericho, the Bible did not say, you see, when you study historically, Jericho did not collapse, Jericho sank. Because if Jericho collapsed, they would still not be able to cross it. Everywhere sank except one wall, where there was a woman called Rahab, because she stayed in the wall. As the wall was sinking, the angel of the Lord preserved it and they brought her and her loved ones and everything sank. And they entered inside and met gold. That means between you and the gold is the wall. Between you and the next level is the wall. Between you and the achievement of that prophecy is the wall. And when you stand there, he says the strategy is to shout. Shout. There are many spiritual things that don't make sense. That's the reason why the Bible says the carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit. Because sometimes we want to calculate spiritual things from our intellectual standpoint. But that's not the strategy. A wise man will say, get a bulldozer quickly and let's bring down Jericho. A wise man will say, let's make a bridge to cross the Red Sea. But God says, my ways are not your ways. You choose your ways, you will waste your lifetime looking for a formula. But you come up higher, my help, comment. There is a system. So I can stand before a wall. My brothers and my sisters, you can even pity me and say, oh dear, this man has met his end. And then two days later, you see me with the gold of Jericho. What happened? The keys, the strategies were given to me on how to bring Jericho down. We cannot just share the grace and leave. You have praised, you have rejoiced. But many of us here seated, you came here with walls. Fortified by the strength and the wisdom of men and demons. It will take a strategy higher and greater than your age and your level of knowledge to bring them down. May I invite you within the few minutes we have to join me as we entertain ourselves watching Jericho go down. Because I tell you, listen, the formidability of God's strategies is something that it will take eternity for us to study His wisdom. Jericho can fall. Did you hear what I said? Jericho can fall. Ah, I think you should prophesy that to yourself. That Jericho. Have you heard this proverb? That in one day a city can be born. Cities are not born in one day. But when God's strategy comes in. Cities can be born in one day. Have you heard that a man can be attending a night vigil and six hours later he steps into a blessing that from January till November he has not gotten? Don't toy with God's strategies. God's strategies was not intellectually approved in a university. It's part of what makes him the ancient of days. That man is old at giving people results. He has mastered the art of lifting men. And the psalmist said, Heal, you are going to disappoint me one day. So very quickly, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. And he's showing us one of the strategies today. Listen very carefully. In all your ways, let's go back and let me tie this. It says, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do you know what it means to acknowledge a man? Can I use you, sir? Please come. Let's use this fine young gentleman. Look at this. Let's assume 
that this gentleman just got an Olympic prize and we're about to acknowledge him. You don't acknowledge what's your name? Vincent. You don't acknowledge him by saying, Vincent, we don't know. That's not acknowledgement, that's motivation. Let me tell you how we acknowledge people. In 2001, he got the best prize, so, 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 and so. In 2005, against all odds, you are acknowledging him. You acknowledge men by flaunting their achievements. Listen. You never acknowledge a man by just clapping for him. You have to go back and search from the archives of history and start to meticulously mention everything one by one that that man has done. Are we together? So I begin to flaunt this man. And when I flaunt him, I continue to put pressure on him. Remember, the goal for flaunting him is so that he will reproduce that result again. So I'm saying this guy ran and he, he ran together with so, so, so and so and this and that. And when I finish, I say, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot go further. Let all rise up and with a standing ovation, with a shout, let us welcome A, B, C. So the Bible says, in all your ways, when you get to a point in your life where there is a wall and humanly speaking, you have gotten to a point where the prophecy of your enemies are about to be fulfilled. He says there is a strategy. Forget about the wall and turn back. Where is the God that delivered me from the lion? Leave the issue of Goliath and go back to what he did yesterday. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He didn't say in all your ways praise him. He didn't say in all your ways sing. He left you with the creativity to invent the various ways you can use to acknowledge him. It's your responsibility. If you need to roll on the ground, as your revelation of acknowledgement, it is allowed. If you need to jump up and down like a madman, provided the understanding behind it is that you are putting pressure on his integrity. That like you did yesterday, do it again. So you meet this gentleman and tell him, and when he stands and is about to run, you have put pressure on his best. He will fight to defend himself, not you. So when you stand before the wall, you know you cannot fight it. You use style to step back and invite Jesus to stand. And you don't do it by saying, Jesus, come and fight. No. Where is the warrior who is the Lord God, strong and mighty? Are we together now? You have a child that graduated and it looked like you love God, but there is no job. Instead of drumming heaven and saying, Lord, this job, I don't know anybody. The last person I knew in DSS office just died last week. We are in trouble. That kind of faithless talk, that gentleman will remain with no job forever. A wise mother will go back and close her door and say, Lord, is it not in 1980 when I was bleeding and I thought the child had died? Where is the God that kept that child? Where is the God? We stayed in one room. No ventilation. Where is the God that kept me? You are acknowledging Him. The Bible says it is a strategy. The reward is that a way. If there is no way, God comes and says, walk through me. I am also a way. I show you how to make doors over walls. God can make a way. But he is also a way. The way. So when there is no option for doors, he comes to stand and says, walk through me. Pass. Hmm. I have... I have gotten victories at a platter of gold. Knowing how to acknowledge you. You learn this principle, you would turn any table to a point that you would join those clapping for you to wonder and say, how did this happen? I hope you believe what I'm saying. My brothers and my sisters, these are the advantages that are hidden in our dealings with God.
It's on the strength of these advantages that God makes certain statements like, For we know that all things. He doesn't just speak through the prophet or through the apostle just like that. No. When God speaks, he speaks in light of the provisions that have been placed within your reach. Hallelujah. So this gentleman can be walking with prophecy that never gets gets fulfilled you receive the word of prophecy that before december god would have lifted you to a level and you love god you have prayed and you have fasted but the walls don't seem to go you talk to the walls at least goliath replied the walls don't talk back if goliath talks back you know he's alive he can fall the walls cannot fall and you stand there and god says let me tell you there is a way this thing can happen forget about the walls and begin to acknowledge me and the strongest system of acknowledging god is what we call the mystery of praise praise is not about singing praise is about inventing a formula that acknowledges god as a strategy for victory psalms 149 says let the high praise of god be upon their mouth and a double-edged sword upon their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron he says to execute upon them the written judgment this one is the blessing and the benefits that god gave the saints that we can bind kings not by using chains we can use praise to imprison evildoers have you heard of that So while you were jumping, while you were singing praises, while we were sweating like fools, what was happening in the realm of the spirit was that the integrity of God was coming under pressure. And now that you have stimulated him, he won't let you go home like that. He said, you, you have been calling me for over five hours. That you have called me, I have not come to talk with you. I have come to talk with the world. Step back. Because he says he will direct your path. He didn't say two of you will advise yourselves on how the path should be done. Mm -mm. Step back. One of the ways that the spirit of depression works is to reduce you to a point of silence i hope you know that the assignment of depression is not to cripple your hand not to cripple your leg but to do something to your praise so that the advantage that you can tap and he does that by manipulating the faculties of your senses why praise god when you got disappointed just like yesterday are you not the one who is now burying your head in shame and you stand and say it's true satan tried it with job and job said nonsense though he slay me yet will i trust him he says all the days of my appointed time i will wait are you getting what i'm saying now Please listen very carefully. Because the mountains that stand before us, time will not move them. Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. What changes things are decisions that are based on spiritual understanding. One day it will change is a joke. It will never change. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the Bible lets us know that one time Judah and Jerusalem were beside by three nations and they were going to destroy them. And the Bible says that Jehoshaphat began to raise a lamentation before God and say, Lord, is this how you are going to destroy us? And Jehaziel, the hand of God came upon him and he spoke by the Spirit. And he says, no, you will see the victory of the Lord. Since you believe the Lord and you believe in his prophets, you will see the victory. And a strategy was revealed. He said, take back your swords. Gather the instruments of worship. Yes, sir. For battle, yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Are we together now? And the Bible declares that the moment they began to worship, it was a formula. Notice even the song. The song we sing today, You Are Good and Your Mercy and Just Forever. It was a chant. Every God told them when you are in trouble, it's a spiritual emergency button. Anytime I hear that song, I will come because you are calling me. Today we sing it just as a praise and worship song. You are good and your mercies endure. I didn't have time to teach you the three keys that represent the help of God. One of it is the mystery of His mercy. Blessed is the man who partakes of the mercy of God. There is nothing you can do with a man who God has shown mercy. It says, above the mercy seat, below the cherubims, there I will meet with you. There is a place where God meets with men. The place of his mercy is where he can meet with men regardless of what is a disadvantage. When God shows a man mercy, run away from him because you are going to waste your time. A man will be praying three days dry, pastor. Another smoker is under the bridge, insulting God. Lord, you are stupid for giving me the kind of father that is punishing me this much. And God will leave the prayer warrior in the room and appear to this stubborn rebel under the bridge and say, I am Jesus. He says, so what? Leave me. He said, no, I will not leave you. I love you. And you are saying, God, must you stay here? Is that how you want to waste your time? It's called mercy. Every time you cannot explain it, if you ever see grace, it is mercy that gives birth to grace. Thou shall arise and have mercy. That's why when blind Bartimaeus he said, Thou son of David, he didn't say, Heal me. Have mercy. Because if you talk about healing, notice in the issue of blind Bartimaeus, Jesus never talked about faith. <laughs> when he met other people, he would say, Do you, you know, um, do you have this? But blind Bartimaeus said, Look, don't ask me. I don't even know which one. Just have mercy. And he said, So, my mercy do. He said that I will see. That's it. The principle of God demands that you do step A, B, C, D to get results. You do step A and B. And you are supposed to fail. Everyone predicts your failure. But when his mercy comes, the mercy of God becomes the completion of what you obviously did not do. And the equation shows that you did everything. And even you, you have to go back and say, Lord, but th this is unfair. And he says, it's my mercy. It's a mystery. It's how we receive help from God. But that's not what I'm talking about. That praise with understanding is one of the ways that can acknowledge God in the life of a man. Show me a man that is a dogged praiser with understanding. I show you a man who will make Satan tired on earth. He will enter his empty church and sing like a fool. You see the reason why they couldn't bring David down? Look at all the things David did. And David will go and report himself to God and say, Lord, punish me. But before you punish me, let me remind you that your mercies are new every morning. And God said, who is this man? Not even Moses was called a man after his heart. He saw God, but it was not enough to be called a man after his heart. A man who could invoke the help of God. Everyone you see and acknowledge today is one who has tapped into this help of God. Paul and Silas, the Bible says they were bound hand and feet, kept in a room. And the Bible says they prayed and sang and the prisoners heard them. Can we read that finally and then we'll pray? Acts chapter... 16 from verse 25 at 16 25 Shalabakuriada. at midnight it says Paul and Silas prayed everybody say prayed 
Number two, it says, and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners did what? So it was not a quiet praise. It was not just mumbling and all of The Bible didn't say they had their prayer, but they had their praise. Next verse. It says, and suddenly, hallelujah, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations, does this remind you of Jericho? The foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately how many doors open talk to me how many all doors not some doors all doors open not only did the doors open the bible says the bands were loosed praise can lose bands not just to open doors the bands were loosed 27 and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out a sword and would have killed himself. But supposing that the prisoners had fled, the last verse, very interesting. It says, but Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm. That means the benefits of praise can even protect anybody around you. That guy would have died. But now this guy was already free and the freedom, he would have killed himself. But he said, no. The power that comes through praise when God shows up is so powerful that it can affect people who are not there. The same way you are seated here. Your family members may be sleeping somewhere. But the power that comes from that praise, they will wake up by the next morning and all of a sudden receive a call that should have come six years ago and say but why do you not know there is a name god is called he's called the father of spirits the manipulator of every human spirit when he calls forth like a summoning you must answer he's the father of spirits i don't know what walls stand before you but tonight we have prayed. We have praised. I want you to watch the walls go down. And if you don't believe this thing, it will be that you have wasted your time. Because you see, my brothers and my sisters, progress in life is what happens when the obstacles that limit you give way. That's the definition of progress. That's the definition of advancement. When there are impediments that stop you from moving forward, we call it delay. You are pegged at a level. God is a God of progress. Everything that is alive grows. So if you are limited in life, in ministry, in business, in your career, shout is for you. Because Jericho is standing. I want you to look at Jericho one last time. You will wish you snapped it. Because you will never have a memory of Jericho again. This is the place of encounter. This is the place of surrender. This is the place where my life. Do to me what you want. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, in my little life, I have seen God arise for men. I have seen people rise for reasons they themselves cannot explain. There is a God that sits in heaven and humbles the pride and the arrogance of men. That a man can beat his chest and say, for as long as I'm here, you will not rise. Don't mind him. Turn back and call the God who created him in praise. And let God come and say, what did I hear you say? Do you not know that I can lift whoever I want to lift? And bring down whoever I want to bring down. I used to know a man years ago. He was looking for visa for a particular embassy 
and one of the consular officers for some reason had a particular vendetta with that man every time he came the man would tell him you are here again don't waste your time you will not get the visa and you know well the man didn't do what was right he shouted at him and he said for as long as i'm one of the consular officers here you will not get a visa true story and then eventually someone came favored him he routed it through another nation got the visa traveled to the country and bought a gift for the consular officer when he returned back he came to see him and they thought he was just here for he said i'm not just here for visa i just tried to join the queue just to let you know i successfully went to your country and to bless you with a gift ah. we see that say it a thing my brothers and sisters and it comes to pass when the lord has not commanded it let's let's not let's not get used to the pride of men that we think god is just a higher version of men men are arrogant even in their confusion they will talk like they know what to do leave men alone and come to the one who is the maker that you can sit down and a job can come while you are praising and he said god i didn't apply you said but you asked me to give you when did i do it in praise because your praise was a language and i came searching for all the things that were standing between you and the next level I know a gentleman whose father was crippled truly crippled and that gentleman used the whole night to praise God by morning the father began to feel his leg shake and that's how the father got up like that praise is powerful when it is done with understanding as a system of acknowledging God you are not dancing because you have gotten the result. It is the dance that brings the result. You are not shouting because the result has come. It is the shout that brings Jericho down. I want you to come here knowing that God used this night's program to compress your success of years and give it to you within a moment. I don't know about your God, but my God can do it. When it comes to these issues, it's costly to assume my God is also your God. Because the God of Abraham is not the God of Isaac. Uh -uh. The God of Isaac is not the God of Jacob. You can only talk about the dimensions revealed to you. I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's the same God, but the dimensions revealed to them. We only boast in the Lord based on the dimension He has helped us see. There may not be many people who have seen the might of God over their lives. But please don't be confused. There are people who have seen the God who is mighty that can arise. Though we are few, we're surrounded by men who have crossed that river before. Listen. Though we are few, we may be few who have seen God as a God of speed. That God can turn a man's life overnight. Joseph is in the prison as a prisoner. My brothers and my sisters, by the next day, he is a prime minister. Do you not know God built cities in a day? Men build cities after a time allocation. But God can build a city the same way he can crumble a city in one day. There are not many people that have seen that dimension. But though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Please, the Lord. My God is a powerful God. My God is a miracle working God. My God can lift men. Listen to me. 
my God can turn a man of God who just came here as an ordinary pastor. Oh God, I love you. And God can say, what is this about your praise that is calling me? Let me put something upon your life that will open the two leaf gates of the nations. It doesn't take time. Just get his heart in your direction and watch God surprise you. Years ago, I, I don't share some of these testimonies. We are going to pray. Years ago, I prophesied to a politician. And I told him something God was going to give him. And he laughed at me. He said, ah, Apostle, I respect you, but Abba, Nigeria is not like that. I said, I, I respect you, sir, but I'm very disappointed. Because you know me. You have seen what God has done. And now I'm prophesying, and you are refusing. And I kept quiet. The day that position came to him, he called me. I said, I know you are calling me to shout. Give God thanks and don't doubt God tomorrow. Servants of God were not elected. Be careful. That's all I told him. Anything God tells you and you can see the possibility already, you didn't hear God. The proof that it is God that spoke to you is that there is no human way he speaks only what his strength can bring to pass so you are in november and god tells you by the grace of god you will celebrate christmas in your house i say oh god abba just tell me i will move from my bungalow to this thing and god says who are you talking about me can't somebody call you in abuja and give you a room in his estate is that not a man what of god we have reduced God to just become like a wiser version of all our humans. But he sits in a class of his own. It's one of the things that worship does. It reminds us, lest we forget. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for arguments. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You move my mountain. For me, miracles, there is nothing that's impossible, and we stand in here only because that will be your testimony that people will look at you and say, No, what happened? You say, Waymaker, miracle walk, promise key, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle walk, light in the darkness. You are here, touching every life. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working miracles. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lights around. I worship you. La 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 la. I worship you. Listen. A 
early this year we're about to pray pastor the lord spoke to me and he said hold on please he said son my people are frustrated and i i was really touched i said lord what, what is the meaning of this and the lord began to tell me that believers are getting to a point where they are beginning to be discouraged and they are beginning to be discouraged not because they are prayerful or prayerless but because the testament that accrues the level of spiritual sacrifice they have committed themselves to is not speaking in their lives now it is true that we don't serve god for cars and houses and all of this however there has to be a consolation to your christian experience that helps to encourage you alongside the people there jesus saw a fig tree that was taken from the earth with green leaves to attract people but no fruit to satisfy them and jesus showed us what we do with unfruitfulness he caused it that means it is true that i love the lord with all my heart it is true that whether he pays my rent or not i love him but what if he pays the rent what if he gives me another house are we together many believers are beginning to indoctrinate themselves through their pain that it could be that god just wants us to give all and sacrifice for him with no consolation for ourselves and that's not the truth in the dealings of God with men there is a provision whereby his spirit men partake of his faithfulness the Bible says oh taste and see not oh wish and keep believing oh taste a day should come that which we have seen we started by seeing it then we heard it then our hands handled it it says this is what we preach there is something about standing and seeing Canaan and not entering it. A day will come you will create your own idol and say, Lord, thank you, but I need to create the God that really brought me out of Egypt. Satan knows that if our lives do not reach a certain level of results, the greatest of us will still be discouraged. When the pastor loves God with all his heart and has the opportunity to double into ungodly things and on account of his sincerity for God, he stays there yet he's crying, Lord the prophetic, Lord the apostolic, Lord fresh fire for miracles. When, was it not the delay of the bridegroom that made five of them fall. If the bridegroom came early, all ten, they were all virgins, don't forget. What separated the other five was the bridegroom delayed. All of them came prepared to meet him. What if the bridegroom came early? Five of them would not have fallen. That means if the bridegroom delayed further, out of the five that were left, they still would have been. The five were just lucky to have met him on time delay is wicked are you hearing what I'm saying God is not just a God that answers he can answer speedily because he knows that the human spirit can only wait for so long so he said ah saddle your ass and run I hear the sound of the abundance of rain I have called for rain. And the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Jezreel. There are certain levels of results that if you had had by now, your loved ones would have been born again. Let me tell you the truth. All these long stories and discussions, you're going to church, your father is already tired. He has started warning you indirectly. By next year, it will be direct warning. We are not seeing anything again. You better sit down and do something else. Can we not prove that God is worth living for? Man of God, is there something that God can do within the few minutes in your life and ministry? that can cause even your enemies to come and say, I'm sorry, 
I was part of those who concluded that he will never rise. But I've seen God do something. I will not, I will be the greatest marketer of your church. The woman said, come see a man who has told me something. They came and saw the madman sitting down in his right mind. And that condition brought ten cities to Jesus. One man's notable result. We are making too much noise. Every witness is only a witness when he has evidence. If you do not have evidence, you are not a witness. It is true that he has called us to be witnesses. We stand before the judge. Where is the evidence? Evidence is not story. Evidence is a token of truthfulness. Show me something that you can bring to your loved ones. And say, I encountered God at shout. They say, so where is the evidence? And you say, watch carefully. By 12 o'clock, somebody comes with a job. By by 11 o'clock, somebody comes with a bag of rice. By the next day, a sister who had not, there was no hope of any man coming to her. Three men come and stand and say, sir, I know you don't like people coming to see your daughters, but I'm a responsible person. I'm not going anywhere. God told me this is my wife. And then you tell them, just like I said yesterday, this is what happens when we shout. Listen. Our time is gone. I'm going to spend just a few minutes ministering to us. But we are going to pray. Lord, I must carry an evidence from here. I cannot continue to tell people, God is alive, God is this and that. Lord, there has to be a token of truthfulness. It could come as an anointing. It could come as a mantle for favor. It could come as a connection to help us. Can you lift your voice in one minute and cry? Lord, give me the evidence. I have praised you. Every time they conquered a nation, they would carry the head of the king as the evidence, a token that seals victory. Please pray. Let something break open in my life. Let it not be that I came here and, and just came to see lots of great men and women of God. You reign, you reign, and oh, you.
for you. My eyes are open. I want to pray for you. I see something remarkable that the Lord will do in this place right now. Remarkable. I'm seeing a very strange grace for speed. Listen carefully. With that grace is coming restoration. Restoration. Some of you is for yourself. Some of you is speed even in the area of ministry. I want to pray now. And please just make sure that they don't interrupt the dignitaries. I want you to bring them out now. Right now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hand. Please listen. Because of what will happen in this prayer. Whether you are an usher or not. Hold the person because people will start running physically as I pray. It's a great for speed. Help those at the balcony and outside. I decree and declare right now. Let the grace bring them out. Let the grace for speed. I open you up right now. By the apostolic and the prophetic mandate I shift you in the spirit. Enter a dimension of speed. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Bring them out. Receive that grace now. Speed. I launch you into a realm of supernatural speed. Speed. Please help them. Help them. Speed. In the name of Jesus. The shout has gone to heaven. He will answer speedily. Speedily. The Lord is showing me I'm seeing the feet of people on chains and I'm seeing fire coming to burn it up and I'm seeing them being released to feel physically that grace for speed. Lord, where are they? I'm seeing the number 17. Please help the ushers bring them out. I prophesy right now on those 17 people. Right now, let that grace supernatural speed to your feet. Now the Lord is that spirit. Now the Lord is that spirit. Speed! Speed! Never will it be said, he come again. I prophesy speed to your life. Hallelujah. We are still praying. Now, I'm seeing a supernatural, I'm seeing the eyes of the eagle. And this is the prophetic. The eyes of the eagle. I'm seeing a strange mantle. Lord, where are they? 44. I'm seeing number 44. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are here, I stretch my hands. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. All those who must drink of this grace, receive that fire now. I stir up the wells. I stir up the wells. I stare up the well. I see 44 people. Help those at the balcony. Help those outside. There is an anointing coming on a few people outside. I see the angel of the Lord outside. Bring them out. Step into that dimension. Step into that dimension. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Elijah are rising here tonight. The Boras are rising here tonight. For the King to be born, for revival to return. For the King.
Dogara. Dogara. I'm hearing a name, Dogara. I just have a few minutes I want to pray. Dogara. I'm hearing a name, Dogara. Please reach that person very quickly. We don't have time tonight. Jesus. Kalabarondas Kalebahas Shobreketis Kiyadabara. Hello, Braska de la Kosana Hasiba Dakatos. That prophetic grace is still falling. God isn't done with it. I'm still seeing it falling. I'm seeing fire. You feel fire from your stomach. I'm speaking it right now. Spring up all wells. Spring up all wells. I cause the fountains to break forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What's your name? What do you do, sir? I'm a hotelian. Huh? Hotelian. You are what? I work with the hotel. Hotel. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the spirit. And every time the Lord reveals this to me, it's a sign of lifting. I don't know you, I've never met you. But I want to pray for you. Can I pray for you, sir? Let me tell you, my brother, your life will change, it will surprise you. We are talking about God here, we are not talking about a man. Are we together now? Yes. That God will lift you in a way. The Lord is giving me an instruction. I'll come back to you. We are going to shout in one minute. I see a mighty deliverance going on here right now. Listen. Mighty. Please, wherever they are, make sure you bring them. There's no power that will stand. This is shout. At the count of three, I just want you to shout the name Jesus. I'm seeing a sword with fire on it. And, and this is the Lord setting people and setting families free. Lord, that you will honor your word and set people free. At the count of three, are you ready now? One, two, three. for you in public because you will testify in public huh? lift your hands in the name of Jesus may the anointing of the Holy Spirit change your life bring him I speak over you you step into a new dimension I speak increase over you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ who is Jessica Jessica 
I'm hearing the name Jessica. I may not have time to pray. We have to walk with time. But I want somebody, Jessica. Who is Jessica, please? Shalari katoska brahazene katozele asamash. Haradoze zia katoska libradiash. Me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. It's over. That's it. Gone forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, every captivity over your life, the Lord is rolling it right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Where's your family? I want to pray for you. Huh? Because the Lord Himself is visiting things as scattered. Oh dear, the mics. Okay. I'm not sure it's working. Is it? Stand up, my dear. The angel of the Lord is asking me to stand here. There is someone I need to speak to on this row. The power of God is coming on someone on this row now. Please bring the person out. Just this row as I stand. I stretch my hands now. Bring the person out. It's God, not the God of the heavens and the earth. Let the Lord change your life now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's the lady. The Lord says I should speak to you that he's opening a door for your family. I don't know you. God brought you by his spirit. I stretch my hands. I see like oil coming on your head. And the Lord is saying I should tell you he's shifting you and your family to a new dimension. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a man of God that God is going to, about to change his ministry. I'm seeing one of the pastors. The Lord is revealing to me who is Ezekiel? You are wearing like pink and then yellow. Pink up. And then there is a yellow down. Is there somebody like that? Who is that? Verify please so that it doesn't just come out here. What is your name? He's shouting now. Ask him. Ezekiel, come, stand. I see the spirit of revelation coming on you, number one. Number two, God is bringing restoration to your family. I stretch my hands. Receive that grace now. Let that anointing come upon you. Your life will be changed. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Who is this? Why are they here? Jessica, two of you, you. The Lord is showing me the vision of a family with five ladies. None of them is married. Five ladies. Who is that? Five ladies. Not one is married. Is there someone? I want to pray a serious prayer. This person is up the balcony. The angel of the Lord is telling me that person is up the balcony. Is there someone like that? Please run. Come. The Lord is changing up the balcony. Please listen to what I'm saying. Up the balcony. Where is she coming from? Let her talk now with the mic. Huh? Up. up the balcony. You are up the balcony. Five ladies in your family, none married. May my God. You see, we receive help from the Lord. Don't worry, I'll pray for the sick now. You don't have to just come out indiscriminately, please. Why is she here? Who is? What's wrong with Mama? Somebody find out. This is an elderly woman. That's not. Huh? Very quickly, step into a new dimension. New grace in the name of Jesus. Grace for you. Grace for. You. Fight for you. No marriage. In the name of Jesus, I release all of you and I break that chain over your family. And I'm prophesying to you right now. You are stepping into a new dimension. Why is that woman standing? You have kidney infection. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. Praise the Lord. I know many of us are trusting God. I will, I will just round up praying. 
um, I just wanted to just talk to a few people as God will. I, I, I was saying there is a man of God. Please don't mind. I will respect time. But I need to do this. I'm seeing like smoke just moving back and forth. And that is supposed to be a grace for a man of God. And I'm not going to bring you out. I'm just going to pray. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit will come upon that man of God. Father, I stretch my hands. There has to be someone here. This is not a general impartation. There is a specific vessel of God. I'm stretching my hands right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know how we are going to be able to identify that is a man of God. But I decree and declare. The person who this grace and this prayer is for. Bring the man of God. That's in there. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Bring him. Your life is about to change. For revival to return. Hey. Is he a pastor or is he a man of God? Can someone help me verify? I don't know. Huh? Yes, sir. You are a pastor where? In Mina. Yeah. In Mina. Yes, sir. Your own church? Yes, sir. Your own church? Yes, sir. And nothing is working? Yes, sir. At all? <laughs> Membership zero. <laughs> Revelation zero. It's not, you are a sincere man, you love God. Sincerity is not enough to do ministry. And he shall receive power. You need empowerment, you see, and wisdom, two things that you need. You may look weak, sir, but let me tell you the truth. Don't underestimate what God can do in your life. Come, hold my hands. You don't know me, but in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. And by the mercies of God, be open to a new vista, a new dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, you may look weak. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord empower you. New dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, I want us to pray for the sick. Would that be fine? How many of you are trusting God to touch you? Or for your loved ones, you can stand. Now, I want to pray. Um, I have a few minutes. I know that it's, it's almost morning. And we'll walk very briefly. We may not have all the time to take all the testimonies, but at least... There has to be a witness. Now, please lay your hands where you are trusting God. Those in front, there is a reason why I leave them in front. Um, I'm coming. Hold on. Let me just speak. In the name of Jesus. You don't have to bring her. In Jesus' name, I stretch my hands. Let the weakness. You don't have to. She will run and come if you don't hold her. In the name of Jesus. Let God give your family a testimony and take away the weakness. I'm seeing something like a sword leaving you. That weakness leaves you in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a reason why I ask that these people come out. I'm going to pray for them. It's not just for show. Let's pray for the sick now. Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for to touch you inside, outside. Those outside, make sure that you are following. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest and let's pray. The God of wonders. Two people are going to shout under the anointing. Loud to the hearing of everybody. The moment that happens, I'm going to begin to pray in the spirit. I'm ready to pray now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Agree with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I take authority over the spirit of infirmity right now. I decree and declare. Every devil of infirmity leaves your body, leaves your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak to you, be healed in the name of Jesus. The Lord is healing high blood pressure. I'm seeing someone with BP. The Lord is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Every blood related disease be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Kidney problems 
be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Just help those under the anointing. There's someone you are not hearing very well with one ear. I think that should be your left ear. I command that ear to open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every malignant growth around your body. Just help those under the anointing. Fibroid or any lump around your breast area. I'm seeing the Lord healing a number of ladies, especially with multiple lumps. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me. I'm seeing someone. There is a pattern in your family. Everybody has hepatitis. Everybody. Everybody, including you. Hepatitis. And it has even killed some. The Lord is setting you free right now. The Lord is setting you free right now. The Lord is setting you free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heaviness in the body. Heaviness. Severe heaviness. The Lord is healing you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone is like you have a boil in your armpit or a growth. Something like that that is, is severely painful. The Lord is touching you right now. By His Spirit. He's touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ be healed. Now whether I mention your case or not because of time. I speak to you be healed right now. Say amen. Be healed right now. Someone again is going to shout, not in front, in the congregation. The moment that happens, we'll take a few testimonies. Please don't ask, you see, these things is a ministry of signs and wonders. And sometimes, the way God does his things, you have to be spiritual. Otherwise, you'll be offended. A loud shout to the hearing of everybody. This is what the Spirit of God is telling me. Thank you, Jesus. This God is an amazing God. Sometimes he does these things to let you know that you believe him. How can you fake this one? Majesty. Now, we have just few minutes. And we may not be able to take everyone. But the power of God just touched you check yourself inside and outside some of you under the anointing here you are you you're surprised to find out god just touched you i want you to quickly just run out here right now just run out let's have one or two of the ministers we may not take we may just take a few testimonies but wherever you are i like you to come out here right now the power of god has touched people and is touching people I mean is this how we celebrate miracles look at people coming out please those outside for the sake of the testimony if they have testimonies, just allow them to come in. God has touched people. Yes, let's have a few people. Quickly, quickly, please. Please just sit down for a few minutes very quickly. Just make your way quickly to the front. And let's shame the devil here at shouts. Just come, line up quickly, quickly, quickly. Praise the Lord. Each time I... Let them come in. Let's celebrate them. They are coming. Some of you at the back. The power of God is touching you. Very quickly. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Each time I pray an intensive prayer, I begin to feel headache, like, like in my green or so. Okay. About, but while you are praying, I instantly feel a cool sensation all around. And it's gone. It's gone. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again. God bless you. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Before coming for this program, I was having a chest pain. That just breathing normally, I will be feeling the pain in my chest. And from the beginning of the program, I've been feeling that the pain is going, going, going. And to the last moment that I'm supposed to pray for us now, I can't feel the pain anymore. Please. The pain is gone completely. Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I have this fungal infection on my finger. It has refused to go for a long time. It's very painful, but now the pain is gone. Completely. Yes. Gone. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
it leaves you once and for all in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I came here with severe pain under my armpits. I have a swelling there. When the man of God mentioned the case of someone with a boil or a growth under the leg, immediately I felt so relieved and the pain left. It's gone completely. Give Jesus praise, Mina. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I had an accident this evening. So when the uh, man of God... Uh, you had what? Come again? Accident, sir. Accident? Yes, sir. This, this evening. evening? Yes, sir. Oh my. Okay, I see your hand. Yes, sir. Okay. So the accident is uh, uh, very uh, severe. The, uh, the bike man... The bike man had a serious injury, but I sustained injury here and my waist. I feel heavy, so which I undergo a surgery. So when you mention that there is someone here that, I, that the person feel heavy, I even said my vein was twist. I can't be able to uh, stretch my uh, my hands yes. properly. So when you mention the this thing, the, as in my body, I, I, I found I can twist, as in, twist my body. As in, I'm okay now. Come on, praise give God. Jesus praise. Amen. The Lord perfects you in the name of Jesus. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I've been having the challenge of my spiritual growth. I found it like sometimes I feel discouraged in praying. Sometimes when I want to pray in the, uh, pray in the Holy Ghost, I feel discouraged because I'm not seeing results. But when Daddy was praying this evening, he was saying speed grace. I, I, I just felt something has dropped in me this night. I really want to thank God. In the name of Jesus Christ, that grace comes upon you. Yes, please. Hallelujah. Um, while Papa was praying, he made mention of a sharp pain in the left ear. The moment he just prayed, my ear busted open and it's gone. Completely. Completely. Look at what God is doing. Are you giving Jesus praise here? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, please. Glory to Jesus. I used to have this serious back pain since when I was very little. But to the back glory pain. of God, yes. Uh huh. Severe back pain. Okay. But right now I can't feel anything. Ben, try to bend down and up. Any pain? No more pain. Any pain? No more migraine. Give Jesus no praise. Migraine. May the Lord bless you. Migraine goes and goes forever. Praise yes, God. please. Praise God. I used to have the swellings under my armpits, the both sides, since I since I grew up to know that I can no notice things in my body. Okay. But I want to give God the praise this evening. I tried feeling the pain, and the pain. The pain is gone. Gone, praise gone forever. In the name of Jesus. Praise yes, Lord. please. I have, I, have, I have chronic ulcer since 2012, and I spent a lot of money treating it, but I was praying now. I found out the pain have gone, and I am not more on that it. Completely. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, perfected goes once and for all. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. And all through this week, I've been feeling stomach pain due to ulcer, and even right up to the moment of um, the second praise, but I, I thank God that the stomach pain is all gone now. Praise the Lord. Gone completely. Praise Jesus. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. My name is Success. I used to, I normally have pains in my ribs. At times, I could not, I can't do anything. It it's even gives me back pain. And secondly, my spiritual life has been up and down and all that. And what happened but this today, morning? today, God visited me. I touch myself where I normally feel pain. Completely, I the pain is gone. It is gone. Praise the Lord. I give God all the give Jesus praise. Please, after that last gentleman, even if you have a testimony, you can wait and then you can give your testimony at House on the Rock during the church service um, on Sunday tomorrow. That we can just finish and it's, it's already morning. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise God. My name is Sandra. Actually came here with ulcer pain. I've been having ulcer. You came here with ulcer. Yes. Okay. I've been having ulcer for more than twelve years now. More than twelve years. Yes. You used to feel the pain. Yes. And right now, the pain is gone. Give Jesus praise. Gone and gone forever. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. My name is Sarah. When I was coming here, I was thinking not to come because my body was very hot. I was feeling headache because I have to take injection before coming. Then my you took here, injection before yes, coming? Before coming. My friend here dreamed me. She said I have to come. But I couldn't even praise God. I was just sitting down. Also, I was just drinking water. I finished two bottles of water where I was sitting there. But during the ministration, I just felt now no headache, no pain again. That hot in the body has gone. It's gone know. completely. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, it leaves you perfected in Jesus' name. Yes, please. 
Um, okay, let, let's just allow the other man. Yes, please. I, uh, um, quickly, quickly. On Tuesday, I was admitted, and this Friday, today, I was discharged, and the doctor told me that I have a sickle cell, and I was not planning to come for the program today. But while I was in the hospital, I was praying that God to grant me the grace that I may be discharged and come to this place. And when I get home, I was very weak. I didn't even think I would be able to come. But while I'm here, the praise was going on. I was just sitting down. But now, I'm very strong. Sickle cell. Yes. Come. Come. How old are you? 13. 18 years. Sickle cell, leave this gentleman forever. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you. Let your blood be cleansed now and forever. In the name of Jesus, no crisis, no sickle cell. Your blood cleansed. You are made whole. In Jesus' name I pray. Just keep him there. God bless you. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Uh, you spoke on a family that um, all the members are having appetites. Yes. Um, to 2015, my mom died and she was tested hepatitis positive. And also, my dad, 2016, also died of hepatitis. And last um, year, I also confirmed that I was hepatitis B positive. But uh, recently, when I went for the test, I was told that it was weakly reactive. When you prayed and you said about the family, I realized that I'm the person, that it's my family, with no doubt. And I believe, though I have not tested myself, but I believe it is gone and gone forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the command hepatitis. Look at me, I'm praying for you. I stretch my hands from here and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. That devil of hepatitis leaves you and leaves your family forever. And I pray that God will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus praise. I'm going to speak over our lives and then I'm done. All of you who are out here, there's a reason why I asked you to come out. I want to pray for you now. Um, I don't want you to feel embarrassed. It's, it's, not, it's not anything to embarrass you at all. I stretch my hands right now. The chains that bind you and the graces you have received. I decree and declare at the count of three. In the name of Jesus Christ. The dimensions you have left you will never return. And the chains that still hold you leave you now and forever. In the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you now. One. Two, three, let them go now. I release them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Release their destinies now in the name of Jesus. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. I command be free now. Every one of you, I open the two leaf gates of your destiny now. In the name of Jesus, I set it as an ordinance in the spirit. I command a release for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please can we rise as we receive the prophetic word and then I'm done. I speak over your life in the name that is above all names. By the privilege of the grace of God, every door that is closed over your destiny, here at Shouts 2018, I command that door to be opened now. The Lord is giving me a word for Owe Abutu. Much more than the song you wrote now, you are writing another song. And that song will take you to nations. Just one song. This is the word the Lord is saying I should give you one song that you are writing and that song will take you to nations beyond your imagination that song will come to you as a revelation of the night and you receive that song it will even surprise you the way that song will open doors it is the angel of the lord's presence himself that will bring you that song and it will surprise you in the name of jesus christ 
I decree and declare everything that has refused to work in your life because you have acknowledged him in praise. I prophesy to you this morning, go back and meet testimonies waiting for you. I pray for everyone's spiritual life here that has gone down for any reason. I decree and declare fresh fire, prayer fire upon your altar. Receive it right now. Fresh prayer fire upon your altar. The grace and the passion for revelation, the eyes that see, I pray that the Lord will grant to you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare anyone here who has been discouraged in his work with the Lord, you love the Lord with all your heart, but you are not seeing the results that should encourage you and you are about giving up. I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ, fresh strength upon your work with God. Every man and woman of God here, I agree with you that for the work you are doing for the kingdom here in this land, may the hand of the Lord strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Every business that has gone down here, hear the word of the Lord. I prophesy to you and I command that you come back to life. I speak over me now. No crisis in this city. No bomb blast in this city. No terrorism in this city. And I speak over your election. The man God has appointed and ordained is the one who will sit upon the seat of government. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray finally for House on the Rock, the platform that God used to put this vision. Go from glory to glory. Go from grace to grace. May the Lord bless everyone in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus a gift. And the Bible says he was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Next verse, please. And that the Syrian went out and so on and so forth, but there was a little maid. Everybody say divine connectors. A little maid that they captured from Israel. She waited and served Naaman's wife, verse 3. And she said to her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria? For he would recover from his leprosy. That is a destiny connector. I am not a prophet. I cannot heal you. But I know a prophet and I can connect you to him. Not everyone who comes to you has what it takes to directly help you. But they can be signposts to show you where help is waiting for you. Let's continue, please. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus saith the maid that is of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go, I will send a letter and so on and so forth. Next verse, please. And he brought the letter to the king, saying, That Naaman, this and that and that, I want to meet a prophet. Now, let's, let's continue. Just flip it through. The king was afraid because he said, you are now looking for trouble. You are bringing a letter so that you will come and fight us now. And when the prophet had it, Elisha said that let him come and know that there is a prophet. Although there was a prophet, a captain of a Syrian army was dying. Everybody who has what can help you is in Nigeria is in Lagos, but between you and that person may be a destiny connector. You can have products and services that someone is praying for and would patronize you in the millions, but someone has to lend their voice to say, I know somebody. Divine connectors. The wine presser could not interpret dreams, but he met a man in prison who could interpret dreams. And so he told the king, I remember my wrong. Oh king, hold your peace. I know a man in that pit. If you fetch that man out, he will interpret this dream. Divine connectors. They are very ordinary people, so it takes discernment to know their relevance. 
because we live in a world where we are passionate about results we want to see the personal we want to see an aura that shows that help is imminent but sometimes they may be very ordinary people a slave girl it takes humility to listen to a slave girl it takes a lot of discernment to believe god will put your miracle in the hands of a slave girl it makes a lot of sense to listen to a prophet it makes a lot of sense to listen to a ceo one day the bike man that carries you or the cab man he may look like an ordinary man but you will hear him making a phone call and in that phone call he will say something that will answer your question for years it takes discernment one day your little child who may be helpless may make a statement and say mommy let's go to pastor for prayer and the holy ghost will tell you a baby did not speak i just spoke that you may die in this situation except you go and meet so and so man of god we need divine connectors in our lives men who know those we need men who have access to those we need there's no time to read on that story you will understand that when elisha did not even come out to meet naaman he said tell him to go to the jordan and to wash there seven times now around those periods in, in history now bible history jordan would be really muddy and dirty so it was not a nice wonderful river that looked like a, a, a resort center it was a place that you would be a madman to get into that water and that's where they sent naaman and naaman got offended naaman said what sort of thing is this number one this man did not even come out to honor me knowing that i came i came with a delegation i i came with a lot of honor what is all this one then number two you now ask me to go and bath in a very insulting river there are many other clean rivers and the slave girl again comes and says sir sorry i know that i'm i'm a maid to your mother but if he had asked you to do certain things that were greater than this would you not do it and she encouraged him and the man went to bath in that river he dipped himself seven times he came out the seventh time and the bible says his flesh was like that of a little child destiny connectors destiny connectors oh you make this product this is very nice well i don't need it i don't have the money to patronize you but the other day i had my auntie saying they are looking for who can supply ten thousand pieces of this every day is it all right if i talk to her about you and that becomes your prayer point answered you must sustain discernment to see men for what they represent in the spirit the most precious things in our lives will not come in packages that are appealing it takes discernment to see divine connectors people who can connect you to your miracle our lives many of us sincerely speaking may have passed so many divine connectors so many of them in search for resources in search for lifting in search for breakthrough we have connected or disconnected ourselves from the people who can act as bridges it is my prayer this morning that god will give us the discernment the discernment i remember many years ago we had a crusade in a particular place in the north and when we got there we were wondering how we were going to do the publicity and you know how we would get the attention of the people and so on and so forth we were just starting and then a strange person comes to me and says sir let me tell you what you will do get a bus and then get a megaphone and let someone talk in the local dialect of the people go around the city doing that and that would be it I never got to see that person again to say thank you. He was a destiny connector. Hallelujah. You can be praying, oh God, change my life, give me a job. And then God brings someone to sit near you. He may be selling something you don't even like. 
dry plantain, plantain chips. And just a shift in the bus. And while you are looking at him, in anger, he will drop a flyer. And that flyer will be an advert for a job. And you look at it and say, well, let me try my luck. Never knowing that your destiny is to be the director of that company whose flyer was just dropped in front of you. You must sustain discernment to see people. If they cannot help you, they can connect you to somebody who can help you. Are we together? Number two, let's hurry up this morning. The second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access and influence. Men of access and influence. These ones have the power, they have the wherewithal to directly help you. Men whose voice, men whose credibility, men whose endorsement, men whose resources can announce you. They can use their influence to lift you. They can use their credibility to lift you. I never cease to be amazed how powerful men can be on earth. There are people whose single signature can turn a man's life around completely. You see, the thing with destiny is that many times you will not have the access for your voice to be heard at the gates. You will need someone who is already at the gate to not only speak for you, but leverage his credibility for you to climb and to get there. We need endorsements. Paul, a man approved of God. You need endorsement. There is nobody that will become global without endorsement. Who speaks for you, who speaks about you, can change everyone's perception of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is the reason why manufacturers of all kinds of clothes and all of that invest millions to allow celebrities endorse their products. There are many products that have nothing to do with football. There are many products that have nothing to do with sports. But they tie the psychology of their customers. They connect their product to someone who has influence across a market space. So that every time you remember that man, you also remember their products. We need men of influence. Someone has to speak for you. Someone has to close the mouth of evil. When God wants to help you, He will bring you to people who have the wherewithal. The truth is that there are people who will just give you money like that. Let me tell you sincerely. It is a prayer that God brings a man in your life who can give you money. Not borrow you. Just bless you like that. If there is no one in your contacts today who can actually get up and just do a transfer and bless you. No discussion, no saying, what do you need it for? Someone should be able to love you enough to commit resources. Not just ideas, not just prayer. Money like that. Are we together? Yes. Men of influence. And you know the church many times because sometimes we may not have gotten it very well in our theology we have we have deprived people of both desiring influence and desiring relationship with people of influence in an attempt to preserve godliness in an attempt to preserve morality we have told people to ignore men of influence and we have done that to our detriment I've said it again that there are men that you cannot cast out of your life. Even though they are cyruses, they are not castable. The only way you pass through that gate is to find favor with them. Not everyone can be prayed away. There are people who the way you pass through their gates is that you obtain favor with them. So when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even those kinds of enemies to be at peace with you. Because if Pharaoh hates you, even though you are godly, you will be a slave. Provided Pharaoh hates you, you can have your covenant, but you will still serve in the field. You can't cast Pharaoh away. You can only pray that you will find favor. 
Are we together now? And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Someone has to endorse you. As a man of God, if there is nobody who sustains the credibility to speak on your behalf, there are circles you may never rise into. You can know God, you can have visions, you can go to heaven and come back, but you will never rise. It takes a voice that can speak. There are products today that rise not because they are the best. It's just because of who recommended it. Praise the Lord. I had the opportunity to be at um, a governor's dedication and I was surprised the kind of people I saw in that church. Um, I knew that these people don't go to church. They, they have no business being in church. And those people were there dancing to the choruses. I said, oh God, influence, 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 influence. You know they don't know God. They don't even know the song. Simple praise and worship songs that we sing every time. They were just dancing around and enjoying themselves. Why? Because a man of influence came. A new government was starting. And if you don't represent, if your presence which means your company, which means your interest is not captured in that moment, then you will pay for it. It is powerful for someone of influence to like you. You will rise for no reason. Who, who likes you or who doesn't like you doesn't matter. Men of influence, gatekeepers, men of strange access. I think I've shared it in this church years ago. A gentleman wanted to go, um, he wanted to go to NDA, the Nigerian Defense Academy in Kaduna State. And um, his height, the height requirement was not sufficient, you know. And they told him, Mr. Man, you will not be able to make it. And then he went to the Emir then. And the Emir sent to tell the commandant that the Emir has added the man's height. Say amen. amen. If a man can add another man's height, it was a message to the job of the commandant. In other words, Mr. Man, favor this young man's interest or leave that place immediately. There are people who will look at your products and say, let this be the brand as far as this is concerned. One voice one credibility one endorsement just like that one signature please attend to his matter let me attend to you you're a man of influence and i will go to your house i will leave my crusade and go to your house and he said no no speak the word only jesus was on his way going to preach then he sees a wealthy man called zacchaeus on a tree and says zacchaeus you are a man of influence. You paid this much price for me. Calm down. Plan change. I'm going to your house. Jesus, your Jesus, now deviates and goes to Zacchaeus' house. And because of that meeting, many people who would have gone to prison were set free. Immediately. Please don't ignore men of influence. Don't ignore men of influence. You have to pray them into your life. Pray them into your life. If there are four or five men of influence in your life, you could be the sixth. They will bring you to their circle. They will accredit you. And they will cause everything and everyone around you to hear you. Is God blessing us this morning? Very powerful men of influence. You need a voice that can speak over you. You need a, not a prophetic voice. Someone whose credibility has already been received within the sphere of influence that you seek to step into. Not everybody is a stranger to that sphere. Where you desire to get to, someone is already there and whose voice has been received. When that person endorses you, and endorses what you represent. Believe me, believe me, believe me. In one day, your entire life can change. In one day, 
your entire destiny can change. It's a real prayer this morning to ask the Lord, send me men of access. Send me men of influence. I cannot continue to pass Lagos every day, morning, afternoon, evening. I meet all these men and just wave their cars and wave their lives and insult them and say thieves all around. Lord, send me help. If your governor calls me today, I will go. You can say anything you want to say. You will see me in his office. Your Excellency, I came to greet you. I, I, I'm not necessarily there to look for money, but I will greet him. Greeting him, even if not for myself, greeting him can mean a job for several people. Greeting him can mean credit. It can even mean a court case settled for someone. I think it was a CNN host or a or BBC host, one of them. I don't watch so much of, of those things, but um, one of the days I was watching and she went to, she had the opportunity to talk with one of the, I think the presidents or prime ministers of a particular nation. And there was a lady who had been oppressed for many years. Um, I think she was, she was um, molested or something like that. And then she reported her manager and they jailed her for it. And this lady met with the president and asked and said, if you were in this situation, will you help this lady? And he said, yes. I said, so will you help this one now? And the president was in a position, there was nothing he could do, and they released the woman. Now, that's influence. Your prayer point has actually been answered. It's just to arrive to your place. And someone's influence can delay you. The same way a man of influence will say, because of me, don't help this man. The person who wants to help you is limited by his interest with the man who does not want to help you. Can you pray in one minute while you are seated? Lord, send men of influence access to my life. There has to be someone in Lagos who knows someone. There has to be someone whose track record can speak for me. I can climb upon the track record of someone. I believe in influence. Please pray. My law firm is at the mercy of someone who is of influence. My ministry is at the mercy of someone who is of influence. The court case right now is at the mercy of a man or a woman of influence. I've not been able to secure a property in Lagos. I've been here 10 years, 20 years. I need a man of influence to speak. There is some end allowance that should have come for me. But I need someone of influence to talk to them at the federal level to release my monies. I, I, I did a project and for many years my money is hanging. I need someone of influence to speak for me. I'm looking for a job for myself or I'm looking for a job for my sibling. I need someone who is of influence. My son or my daughter is in an industry that has a lot of tribalism and wickedness and religious sentiments. I need someone of influence to protect the interest of my community. Hallelujah. I prayed this prayer for myself for one whole month. One whole month. Lord, bring me before men of influence. I don't want their resources. I want their heart. I can give you money and hate you. But if I give you my heart, you have everything. Do you believe what I shared this morning? Men of influence. Life will be hard without them. It takes a long time to create a track record. And there are too many spaces in life that require a track record before the gate is open. Your lifetime is too short to create all the track records by yourself. You will need to leverage on the credibility of those who are already there. No. Let me see the devil that will try to sack her from that work. You see that by God's grace, the manager is my friend. He's just to call him and tell him the issue, then pray for him.
you see that? I may not be able to do so much in the accounting, but I can pray. And boy, it works. You see that? So that you can gain influence. So because of you, many people will eat. Because of you, many people will rise. And let me give you a little advice. The purpose of influence is to secure your future. That means when God makes you influential, know that every level of influence has a lifespan. What you do with influence is to raise as many people. They are the ones who will keep you afloat and never go down. That's why you see people today become a director of a federal parastata for 20 years. No one ate because you rose up. No one went to school because you went up. No one got a job. Nobody got married because you were there. And when they retire, they retire back to their past. Because there was no voice to keep them there. Praise the Lord. There are people who will tell you, I spent 20 years in the U.S., 30 years here, 40 years here, this and that, and those people cannot give you a bottle of minerals in old age. It's a cause. The purpose of influence is to lift men and bless them while using them to secure your future and that of your children. There are names in this nation that are keys and there are names that are padlocks. People have had to change their whole names. The first name, the middle name, the last name. They, they just use encounters as a, an excuse. But the truth is they have discerned that something about this name will prohibit my growth. Some person did something that associated pain to a name. Jabez said, oh God, thou wouldest bless me. My mother bore me in sorrow and gave me a wicked name. There are people today because of those they have lifted. Their children will always be prefects in school. Whether they perform well or not. Loyalty to that track record. Their children will always find somebody to marry. It doesn't matter whether they have character or not. For the sake of what happened. Their children will never beg for bread. Someone will arise and say, whose son is this? No. The man may not be there, but I will ensure that the child works. Young man, you are not a very wise young man, but for the sake of what your dad did, I will still give you a job. Please hear what I'm saying. These are the systems of life. Those who understand this continue to rise. The moment God gives you influence, refuse to focus on the deception, the momentary deception that the applause of spotlight brings. Quickly lift people. Quickly lift people. You are three years as a director. Let people rise. Let people rise. And the day you want to go down, they'll say, not when we are here. We will keep you there. There are politicians today who will never go down because of this one key. Whether you like them or not, they have lifted too many people to not be honored. There are others who will go down even when God lifts them because there is no support structure. Is God giving us wisdom this morning? So where you are, you came to church this service, you may need to look back while it's true, we are talking about attracting men of influence. I'm digressing to just encourage us. Now that you are a director, now can you turn back? Show me who is rising because of you. If there is nobody, your future is in trouble. Your future will soon look like your past, except for the person you raise. There are music artists that rose up and forgot everybody and when their season of shining ended they went back to their past they're still there till today there are others who have stopped being productive as persons but those they have raised will keep them to be relevant there are men and women today that our fathers of faith have raised you know um yesterday we we're having a brief conversation with pastor and he, he began to share with me his relationship with um, our father here and I was touched the track record the things that have happened please let someone be able to eat because God lifted you 
Let someone be able to go to school. Don't wait till you become a director. You will never get there. God will watch what you are doing now. Let someone be able to say, God used you to lift me. They are the ones that tomorrow when you stand and the gate does not open, they will come with their key. And say, my hand could not reach the gate when I was young, but now my hands are strong enough. I can open the gate. You see a lot of old women roaming around and you ask, where are their children? Didn't they give birth? There are people today because of what they have done in my life. They will never go down as far as their lifetime is concerned. You can change the future, but you cannot change history. And there, are, there are many of us, it's easy for God to favor us because the men he will use are, 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 are around us. It's not difficult for him to speak to one person or another person or another person because you've lifted too many people. He just needs to wake any one of them in the night and your life changes. Is God giving us wisdom this morning? But back to my teaching, men of influence, we need to call them into our lives. We need to call them into our lives. We need to pray that God brings them. I wish I had time. I would have shared with you the protocol of greatness because no great man will come into your life at your terms. You have to know how to relate with the life of the palace. Many people can relate with their colleagues, but we cannot relate with the great. The great have a protocol that keep them magnetic to you. One of it is honor. Another is adaptation. Adaptation is proof of honor. Great people are very complicated. It takes you having a high level of adaptability. This dear man of God was sharing about the number, the account and all of that. And I just looked at him. I said, oh dear, I'm sure this man, let me tell you something. I consider myself to be one of the most simple people. It's just my life that makes it this way. Are we together? My phone never goes off. You see my phone beeping. Even when I'm praying. Because there are calls, text messages from around the world that comes. It never goes off. Someone now, although he knows it is Sunday morning, he's still angry that I'm not replying him. Are we together? Because of, and it's not because the person is bad. It's because of the reality of the emergency. It's one of the reasons why I will not go to a resort center to rest because it's going to become a counseling place. Someone will see that. Ah, is it not a puzzle? You are swimming. Please, sir, I have a challenge as, as if I'm not a human being. You see that kind of thing. Greatness has a real price. There is a very real price. And if you are hot tempered and you want someone to give you a job at your terms, you will remain unemployed forever. You can wait in front of the office from morning till night. And the person is inside. Oh, one phone call. Five hours. What is he discussing? Can't he just sign this thing and let me go? And then you stay unemployed. There is a protocol of greatness. Is God giving us wisdom this morning? Oh no. Unbelievers know this. Politicians know this. A man's birthday will be January. But even by October, a company will still celebrate him because he was invited to just come and share. But they say, okay, um, we could not celebrate your birthday by January, but here is a cake. Is it really about cake? Believe us, let's tell ourselves the truth. A man that has forgotten that he is so, so, so old, they will remind him, they will bring children to sing and wave all kinds of ribbons, and the man is just smiling. And with that smile will come a contract worth tens and hundreds of millions of dollars because a great man was appeased. If the influence of a man does not matter to you, then you will remain small. Don't sit and say, why are they behaving like they are big people? They are. They really are. It's not an insult. It's the truth. It's, it's the truth. You know, we can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. Hallelujah. Men of influence. Men of influence. One man. One conversation. One endorsement. And it turns your life around.
may God bring such men in our lives in the name of Jesus number three very quickly the third category of destiny helpers that we desperately need is gifted people gifted people these ones may not have influence they may not be connectors but they are exceptionally skilled their goal in your life is to create efficiency gifted people you need sincere people but you need gifted people they are the ones that get the job done if you have connectors and you have men of influence you may still fail eventually you need gifted people skillful and talented people they use their gifts they use their talents their skill to help you accomplish god's purpose first samuel chapter 16 please we'll read from verse 17 skilled people many companies today have great potentials but they don't have the favor of gifted people they have sincere people they will never steal anything from you but as far as productivity is concerned results will always be zero there are restaurants today that should be national brands even global brands very sincere people they pray by six they pray by 12 they round up by seven yet the company does not grow because every meal they produce has a problem no gifted people second samuel please read with me let's read it together one two read and saul said unto his servant provide now a man that can play well and bless it is battle you are looking for he's still a man of war in case you want him to be part of your affairs he's prudent in matters and if you want someone who is diplomatic he's a comely person and he has a persona that is very receptive and then in addition if all you want is the ark of god the lord is with him no matter how you route it you will still need him can you be such a man i know that for many of us all that they will say is you went to school and you're a christian it's too small not for greatness it's it's wonderful to get the kind of job you don't want but if it is to serve with kings you will need skill versatility of advantages not just education your intelligence your knowledge your character are we together yes sir you need this kind of men in your life they are the ones that make things work there are churches today look at this wonderful i sat down and i just saw you know from the choir to pastor and all of that i said this is my message you need skilled people in your life you don't need someone that will embarrass and disgrace your company because you sent him to speak on your behalf he goes there as a christian he will pray and fast before going there but leave your company with a letter returned to you so we are grateful you will hear from us later that means you came and embarrassed us we don't know what you represent this young man just came and showed us character which is wonderful but at the end we don't know what you produce who are you and what do you do skill you need to pray for this kind of people I remember one a dear woman many years ago we had once used her like a, a little like campground we used it one time for a retreat during one of our crusades and she had this young boy she liked I think he was a relative and the guy was a building engineer and this guy continued to build nonsense for this woman the buildings were bent they were almost falling yet she would not leave him and I said this man is not going to last here very sincere man the woman had she prayed for a very wealthy couple who gave her i think then it was up to one billion as a seed because the the, um, the woman took in so this woman of god now used the money to just establish some problem then no you can imagine and then she brought this guy to change his life this guy continued to build nonsense continued to build nonsense i mean the buildings were a testament of his 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 um whatever you say you are right i don't want to be the one to say it 
But now you see, let me tell you this. Many times God would delay our lifting because the expectation from our helpers, we don't yet have it. So sometimes God will suspend your arrival at the stable of greatness. It is not delay. It's him giving you room to prepare. Are we together? Saul is a king. Saul is not a farmer. Whoever must play for Saul must play well. Whoever must cook for kings must cook well. Whoever must be a king's secretary must know what he's doing. We must pray for skill ourselves. And then we must pray that God will bring skillful people. There are companies that go down because the one or two skillful people have to relocate abroad. Have you seen those kind of things? And the company that was once a global brand, usually in most corporations, there are not more than five to ten people who are the pillars. The rest are just supporting structures. They know, the management, they all know. These are the people who will never go out of job. May God bring skillful people around us. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God bring skillful people. People who will do a job in a way and manner that will turn your life around. I mean, if it is this, you ask them, deliver this, they will deliver with a level of exceptional competence. And the man can come and say, look, I am an allergy. I don't favor Christians. I even hate them. However, I have noted that if I ignore you, with respect to the international partners, I will fail. I may succeed in Nigeria, but I can't be global. So because of that, you will have to come and head a unit. And you say, sir, while I head this unit, I pray. And say, pray your thing. Just make sure you are there. Let Pharaoh seek for a man who is discreet and wise that he may set him above all his affairs. And, and he said, For as much as there is no man who is as discreet and wise as he, immediately Joseph was promoted. Man of skill. And I pray that that man or woman of skill will be your child, though, so that you are connected together forever. Because if your child is the worst of all the people you are lifting, it's not a blessing. You must pray. And then you pray to that that man of skill will also be you. Because if you continue to outsource, you are still limited. A day must come when you will have to be competent yourself. Is God speaking to us this morning? Please pray in one minute while you are seated. Lord, send me valuable people. Thank you for men of character. Thank you for godly people. But at this phase of my company, I need people of skill. Paying so much salary but not getting the returns for it. Bring skillful people. My agency needs a skillful person. Lord, I need a skillful secretary who will not drive away people from my corporation. I need a skillful chef. I need a skillful ministerial friend. I need a skillful businessman. I need someone who is truly skillful. Thank you, Jesus. Are we praying? Hallelujah. When you pray this prayer and God answers it, your life will change. The gift of skillful people. Many of the songs you hear me sing, these are the people who wrote them. Right here at my back. Yes. Skillful people. Very powerful. This is my head of department, worship. He's the one who wrote the song, You Ray. That you sing all the time. Are we together? Skill. Ministry becomes easy when you don't just have people of character but people who can deliver. Sincerity is important but on its own it will not get the job done. You need results. And you need to coordinate people who can produce real results. Real results. Real results. 
real results. Praise the Lord. Many of you would have noticed yesterday in the course of the, the Younger Yielded program, for those of you who are around, you would have noticed more people walking that were not part of the team. Because the system of leadership is that as a ministry we're a family that is not bounded by geographic limitation. So many of our people who are in the protocol, ushering and the rest, anywhere we find ourselves, the job continues. So that's what happened yesterday. A number of our protocol people who are in Lagos here got their formation immediately and work continued. The protocol people work continued. Skillful people. Let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you sincerely. If you have a business here, please go to God and pray. You don't need many people. Most of the leakages in our finances at the corporate level is because of our search for the few skillful people. So you will continue to pay five people for something one person who is truly skillful can do. Rather than paying ten people fifty fifty thousand, I'd rather pay one person four or five hundred thousand who would deliver for me the result of ten people. They looked at Saul, they said, Saul killed 1,000 but David killed 10,000 CEO who would you employ of the two a man brings 1,000 percent returns another man comes in and brings 10,000 percent returns I was having a conversation with someone who told me that one of the top leaders in one of the banks you know that now no longer existing was absorbed into another bank and he gave the director six months the manager he said give me six months i will turn this and this in your bank around and within one month he started producing a fearful result skill can be repeated results can be replicated again and again and again and again Praise the Lord that God will bring skillful people to your life. Number four, and then we pray for this morning service. Have we been blessed so far? The last kind of destiny helpers that we need to rise in life, they are called burden bearers. Burden bearers. So we have divine connectors. We have men of access and influence. We have gifted people. Then we have burden bearers. Please look up if you can. These are trusted and faithful people who will stay with you through the storms. Who will stay with you through challenges until your glory is revealed. Burden bearers. These are men and women who may not necessarily be skillful. They may not necessarily know those who are influential. They may not necessarily be influential themselves. But these are stayers. They will stay with you. In the prison, they will be there with you. In shame, they will stay with you. But you can be sure that if there is a shoulder to lean on, you can tell them every secret about your life. The good, the bad, and the ugly and that their dishonor towards you will not change. You will need such men in your life because in destiny storms will come. In destiny the devil will try to attack you. In destiny many things will happen around your life. And if all the people you have are those who only celebrate your glory, you will do well provided you remain there. But the day you will have to go to the cross, even the disciples can run away. The 5,000 people who wanted to make you king can run away. There are few people you must know and have. Ruth chapter 1, please. We'll read from verse 15 and 16. Ruth chapter 1. Borden bearers. And she said, this is Naomi speaking to Ruth. Behold, Thy sister-in-law is gone. I hope you understand the story. This was a story that the two women lost their, their husbands. Are we together now? And now one just left. Well, 
to your tent, O ye Israel. My husband is dead. Let me go and look for another husband. And then Ruth will remain with Naomi. And Naomi was telling Ruth now, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back to her people, unto her gods. Return thou after your sister-in-law. In other words, just go and leave me. I'm a woman of great sorrow. My sons are already dead. And I, I don't have any good for you again. It was marriage that brought us together. And now that there's no basis for it, please go. And Ruth said, Hallelujah. May God bring this kind of people to your life. Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God. These are the kind of people that even if the company foils, you ask them, what are you still doing here? They say, it was never about the company. It was about you. You say, look, I have to be fair on you. Just go and get another job. And they say, mommy, daddy, don't waste your time. I'm not going anywhere. We will die here. If God does not lift you, then let me remain a failure forever. You say, I hope your head is correct. You say, no, I'm a burden bearer. It is painful that during your dark times there is nobody to be a real shoulder please hear me if you plan to rise in life especially for we the young people listen to this it is one big secret the generation of our parents have that we do not have our parents have real burden bearers there are people who can stand by you and tell you you are my friend what happened my child died if your child died, my own child too died. I'm with you. There is no food to eat. No food to eat. My account is your account. I give you my ATM. The house rent. I'm about to be embarrassed. Not when I'm alive. I'm here. Ah. My son got another lady pregnant out of wedlock. Let's go and see the family together. No, no, no. This will be too much embarrassment. Let's go. If you are not ashamed, I will not be ashamed. We will cry together. There is a legal case against me. I'm on my way to the prison. Let's go together. They will have to jail us together. Let me tell you, not everybody is selfish. There are truly selfless people who will die with you. They are called burden bearers. Mark chapter 15, please. We'll read from verse 20 and 21. This is the passion of the Christ. And when they mocked him, Jesus now, they took off the purple from him and put on his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. There are times that Jesus will even die. Yet he will die not for his sins, for the sins of the world. There are times the CEO will go through so much turmoil, not because you did something wrong, Listen to me. There are times we go through storms because of what we have done right. Not because of what we have done wrong. And they compel one Simon of Cyrene. Who passed by. Coming out of the country. The father of Alexander and Rufus. Help me. To bear his cross. Jesus would never arrive Golgotha. He was bleeding to death already. No strength. And a man came, Simon of Cyrene, and carried the cross. Jesus, I may not carry the sin, but I can carry the cross. There are people like that. I may not be able to take the pain of the bereavement. It's not my child, but I can help you go through this storm. It is painful to go through storms in life and be left alone. Unfortunately, this is the kind of world that we live in. Where people will applaud you in the days of honor. But let the company fold. Downsize people. Let the federal government publish your name as having an issue. as having some, let, let there be something that can bring shame and reproach. And you will be surprised at those you call friends. You will be surprised as those you call allies. Let me tell you this. When you find a burden bearer in your life, 
pay any price to preserve them. It was Benny Hinn years ago who was speaking with Marilyn Hickney. Many of you would know her. In her 80s now, a great healing evangelist. And they were discussing the subject of relationships as it relates to selflessness. And then Marilyn Hickney, Benny Hinn said Marilyn Hickney told him 20 years before that time that if he ever found five people who were like those I just described, that he would be the luckiest man on earth. And Benny Hinn laughed at her and said, what? No, I have a ministry with great people. Until he had the divorce issue. I can say it now because they are back to the glory of God. One morning, Benny Hinn is preparing to go for a crusade. And here comes the people with papers from the court demanding for a divorce from his wife. The news reverberates the world. Imagine a Benny Hinn, an inspiration to people. Half of his partners, half of the partners left. And I hope you know his evangelistic meetings are very capital intensive. Half of the partners. There were certain churches and people, I know this for a fact, especially around Europe, that wanted to invite him. They cancelled the invitation immediately because they said, bringing you now will cause a national problem because you have an issue that is a scandal and we're sorry, we can't receive you. Many of the friends of that dear man of God, many who had been healed by his ministry, many who called him their father, they left him. Oh. They left him. The best of men. Ben Hinn was left alone. But there were few people. And Marilyn Hickney came again. And she said, Benny, don't worry, I'm still here with you. And they were cracking jokes and laughing up and down. And she was part of the few people who prophesied to him that the Lord revealed to her that he will come back with his wife. And Ben Hinn now told her, he said, I remember what you said, that if I could find five of these people, I were a lucky person. You need the gift of good people. You need the gift of people who you can cry your heart to and say, you may see me smiling now, but I don't know where this rent will come from. And you will never hear it anywhere. Never. They will cry with you. They will pray with you in the secret and in the open. They will say, oh God, please take away shame and reproach from this person. If you find such people, please hear me. Pay any price. Humble yourself. Roll on the floor if you have to. Preserve that relationship because they are burden bearers. On your way to the cross, you may lose so much. Although you are the Savior, but at this time, you will need a helper. Burden bearers. Entreat me not to leave you. I will be with you. Your God will be my God. Let me tell you this. One of the greatest gifts in my life in terms of relationships is this that I just told you. The gift of burden bearers. You see these people who work with me? I know they are humans, but sincerely, many of them can die for me. It's true. I'm not pretending it. I love them with all my heart, sincerely. But I can tell you, the sacrifices, what these people can go through for me. You bring a gun to kill me, they will not think about it. They will stand and receive the bullets. That if there is no such person in your life, then you are in trouble. Thank God for those who will be with you at the throne. The 24 elders did not come to help Jesus get to the cross. The four living creatures, although they bow down, they bow down to a king. Not one on his way to the cross. Who will not bow down to a king? We are looking for who can bow down to take the cross. Certain men came to David in the cave of Adullam. Although they saw a runaway man running from Saul, they would have said, shame on you and you want us to be your king? They came and bound themselves with a vow. We are free, you are bound. You are in hiding, we are exposed. Yet you must be king over us. These are the systems of the kingdom. 
Show me a man who has a destiny connector. Show me a man who has access to the heart of a man and a woman of influence. Show me a man who has the loyalty of gifted people. Show me a man who has the allegiance of burden bearers. I show you a man who Satan cannot do anything against. I show you a man whose growth will never end. I show you a man whose life will be as easy as anything. This is why we came to church this morning. Some of you have some of this. Some of you may not have any of this. It's time to pray. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Sing one more time. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. For the last time now, I set my life free on me. Lord, I look to you for life. I set my life free on me. I look to you for life. Please hold hands with someone, whoever you can find by your left and right. This is first a prayer. For the precious members of this great assembly. And then for all of us who are represented here and for many who are following online. We are going to pray. Everything grows because of relationships. We are saved today because of a relationship. We rise because of relationships. We were born because of a relationship. It was your relationship with your lecturer that made you educated. It is your relationship with your mother, father, siblings that create a family. There is no life without relationship. The Bible starts with a family, ends with a family. While you are holding the hand of that person, in one minute, I'd like you to imagine that that were one of the four people sent to you. Anointed, commissioned, raised. Blessed are you if that person is your wife. And blessed are you if that person is your husband. Blessed are you if that person is your business partner. Blessed are you if that person is your best friend. Blessed are you if that person is your colleague. Some of you, while you are standing, although you are holding the hands of others, with respect to these four people, you are standing alone. There is nobody in your life today who is a divine connector. There is nobody in your life today, sincerely, who is a man of influence. You are aware that there are men of influence, but you have not captured the heart of one. For some of us, We've not been given the mercy and the gift of access to gifted people. And greatest of all, some of you, we do not have people in our lives today who will be there for us. They will call you king when you give them bread, but they will curse you when it is the cross you are carrying. You will need people who will call you king at the throne and on the cross. They will still say you are my king. Lift your voice in one minute and pray for the person whose hands you are holding. This brother and this sister came to church this morning with a prayer point. But God is telling you your prayer point is actually a request. Send me a divine connector, oh God. Send me a man of influence, a man with credibility and access. Send me 
a gifted person like David like Jonathan send me a true body bearer hallelujah praise the Lord now before I pray over us in closing we are going to mention these people one by one and pray them into our lives. Is that alright? First, we are going to pray for divine connectors. Think of many doors that have refused to open. Think of doors you passed and did not know they were those doors because no one told you. You are going to pray and say, Lord, send people to show me where to go. Send people my way, oh God. They may not be men of influence. They can tell me where the anointing I need is. They can tell me which ministry to go to. They can tell me. Some of you, you were told to come to church this morning. The person who asked you to come for this morning's service is your divine connector. You would have been at home sleeping or somewhere else. Being blessed, but not this way. He said, we have not seen it in this fashion. Is someone praying from the depth of your heart? Divine connectors. I'm tired of this level, oh God. I'm tired of paying for everything by myself. I may not know the way to the city, but send me someone who can show me someone who knows the way to the city. There has to be someone who knows my destiny helper. There has to be someone who knows my lifter. There has to be someone who knows my promoter. Where is my little slave girl who will take me to the prophet? Where is my Simon of Cyrene who will help me to the cross? Where is my good Samaritan who will help me heal from the pain of robbers? Where is my Ruth who will not leave me like a fugitive? Is someone praying this morning you came to church? The house of God is where lives are changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, you are going to cry that God will bring men of influence. Please, I want you to pray this from the depth of your heart. I submit to you that one man of influence in Lagos, Lagos is a place of, of plenty. We who are not domiciled within this area, we can see the advantage that you have. Why should you be in Lagos for heaven's sake? And from Monday till Friday to another Monday to Friday, a whole year, a whole decade, nobody of influence can have you at heart. They don't come on their own. They are called in prayer. Please open your mouth and call them. Call them. There are thousands of companies in this city. There are thousands of ministries in this city. There are thousands of organizations. Thousands of opportunities. Oh God of heaven, send me a man. Send me a woman whose credibility has been vetted. You are a music minister, pray. Send me by your grace, O oh God, to a platform of influence that will announce what I represent. You are a businessman. Lord, send me, send me, send me men and women that my appearing in their cycle will change the world's perception of me. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. We are still praying. Many of us snap with men of influence, but we are not connected. Just because you have a photo with a man of influence does not mean the transaction has happened. It's a new connection. It's a new connection. When the devil says go down, he will use his influence and say remain up. Remain up. When they say you are too short, his influence will add to your height. When they say you are not qualified, he says I add my CV to his own. Give him a job. He can't buy that property. It's 500 million and all he has is 50 million. And say, I bring my human capital. Keep the land for him. He may not have the money, but I bring myself as a collateral. And I keep it. Let that property remain there till he has the money to buy it. Credibility. Number three. We are going to pray for gifted people. Lord, bring me people of skill to make my work move forward. Bring me people of skill to make results predictable. Bring me people of skill to bring consistency to my results. Please pray. Consistency. Consistency. Sustainability of quality through competence. Hallelujah. Finally, for the four sets of people, I want you to pray this one. A friend is made for adversity. You are going to pray. Lord, where are the people? You are the one who knows the heart of men. If I judge by my eyes, I will call wrong people right and right people wrong. By your spirit, bring people who can die with me. Bring people who will stand by me. Bring people who can cover for my shame. Bring people who will cry with me. Bring people who bought my crown and my cross means the same thing to them. Bring people whose love and loyalty will not change. Please pray. Pray it for your company. Pray it for this precious church. Pray it for New Heritage Baptist Church. Father, continue to send people. Continue to send people to this assembly. Men and women who will stand with and by this church. And stand for this church. At all times. Consistent. Always. Unbending. Reliable. That when it's time to raise funds, they will raise. When it's time to bring skill, they will bring. When it's time to cry, they will cry. When it's time to eat, they will eat together. When it's time to fast, they will fast together. Bring such men to my life. Pray for your homes. Pray for your homes. Many of us have so many people in our homes. But how many of these people are the ones I just described? Many of us have many teachers in our schools. Many workers and staff in our companies. Lord, I don't just need staff. I don't just need workers. Not just loyal people. Burden bearers. Burden bearers. Burden bearers. People who will not say one thing in your presence and another behind you. Sincere and genuine people. Hallelujah. Let me just add one more prayer point for us. All of us here represent families. Most families are shattered because these kinds of people are not there. When things go down for the father, everything can change. The children become something else. Father, I'm not proud of you. Shame on you. Till now we don't have a house. And on their way they go. Mother, I'm, I'm proud. You had just one child and could not have another. Families are broken 
when you do not have burden bearers listen let me tell you and you are as you pray you will pray for yourself too that i will be a burden bearer because there are many of us the fortitude the ability to stay with people when things are unfavorable we we are averse to pain the more you will betray anybody when you find an alternative no we have to be people of strength you have to find a cause you are loyal to that is worth your death not your life let's pray for our families lord keep our families strong let the bond be unbendable regardless of results let the bond be strong i believe in family please pray for every family your extended family your family here lord that i will love my wife genuinely lord that i will love my husband genuinely has nothing to do with what is provided for or not that i will love my children genuinely has nothing to do with their performance in school that i will love my parents genuinely has nothing to do with their ability to to provide or protect as desired unconditional love and loyalty that is not dependent on results let me be a burden bearer lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments of One of my life's goal as a person not a man of god i prayed and cried before god i want to be a shoulder that can hold people not just a preacher i want to be a destiny helper to a generation more than fame more than resources or some of these mundane things that someone will be able to say i was on my way going down but apostle came and helped me. It has nothing to have prayed for burden bearers to come. But are you one? Can you man, to be one of these four things for today? There has to be somebody. It could be a call. I just placed a call since you lost your loved one. I'm sorry, I've not been able to call. How is everything now? And while they are crying on phone, you tell them just to encourage you. Weeping and just for a night. But joy comes with the morning. You are a burden bearer. Some of you, by the Spirit, may need to just support someone who you used to support and you've forgotten. How is this person sharing? Let me just give him 5,000 today. Young man, are you still in school? Come to my house. Take this. Take a tear of Gary. Go back to school and read. Living is truly worthwhile only when your life is being poured out as a drink offering to be a blessing to others father we pray that this teaching this morning will turn our lives into signs and wonders bring to our lives oh god destiny help us help us to understand the excellency of advantageous connections bring divine connectors to our lives bring men and women of influence to our lives bring gifted people to our lives and oh god more importantly especially at the times we live in bring genuine burden bearers to our lives in the name of jesus i minister the peace of god right now to everyone here who may be hurting and you may believe that your life 
is at its lowest point. Things are not working. No results. No door opening in spite of your Christian work. I declare to you that by the reason of this teaching, the grace that will attract destiny help us, even beginning from Sunday today, may that grace rest upon you. By the ministry of destiny help us, we call every project that has refused to move forward and to be completed. We call it completed now in the name of Jesus. By the ministry of destiny help us, we call everyone in need of a job. That in the name of Jesus, between now and the next 90 days, may you return with strange testimonies. By the ministry of destiny help us, let all debts and all bills that are sitting upon families and will not allow them rest, may God raise just one person to override those bills. By reason of a destiny helper, may the doors that have refused to open, sometimes even for decades, may one person of influence open those doors for you. And I pray finally, may you be all these to someone. May you be a divine connector to someone. May you be a man or a woman of influence to someone. May you be a gift to someone. And may you be a burden bearer to someone. In the name of Jesus Christ. New Heritage Baptist Church, may the Lord bless you. We pray as all the people who you have invested in and blessed, that God will keep this church afloat. You will continue to go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. That by the next time we will meet, this church will be ten times better. Let the least in this church be like David. In the name of Jesus Christ, we call every member of this church Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. One more time, thank you so, so much. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Lord, I know that you will do this for the sake of your glory. We surrender all to you. Let this place remain a place of healing, a place of deliverance, a place of transformation, a place where men meet with the King. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because by the power of the Holy Ghost. No man is able to do this. Week after week we gather in your presence. I pray in the name of Jesus that you help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let tonight not be an ordinary night, O oh God. Change our destinies change our destinies. We declare how much we love you and how much we need you. We appreciate the things that you are doing in our midst. We refuse to take for granted the miracles and the manifestations of your grace. We come with hearts of gratitude. And Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today.
take for granted what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. Every time you come for this meeting, realize that it's an opportunity for you to meet with Him. Hallelujah. So that you don't just come and not receive. We want you to leave with something that will make a mark in your life in the name of Jesus. Welcome everyone around you. Thank you for coming. Please hug someone. Hallelujah. Tonight's teaching is very powerful. Um, hallelujah. There are certain times in our lives when God brings messages that can alter our destinies. Every message is important. I believe it is powerful. But there are certain times when God just steps in and grants you keys and revelations that will make you so powerful and so blessed. I believe that if you take seriously what you are going to hear tonight, it will open us to new dimensions of glory in the name of Jesus. Help us tonight, dear Spirit of God. You are the only helper we have. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the greatest assets that a Christian can have in his life it's not just the ability to pray. It's not just the ability to, to study God's word. It's not even just the ability to love God. But one of the greatest assets that a believer can have is the ability to interpret spiritual things. Hallelujah. The ability to relate the things that happen in the earth realm from the perspective of the heavens. The Bible says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times. Praise God. When in the days of Belshazzar, the Bible says that there was a handwriting that came from the realm of the spirit and wrote on the wall, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesim. And no man, including the soothsayers and the magicians, could interpret it. Hallelujah. One of the greatest assets that we need in these days as believers is to contend for that place in the spirit where we are able to interpret the handwritings that are on the wall so that we can understand the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. We can understand the pathways in the spirit. And this is what we seek to enforce in this place. All the principles that we teach in this place, all of the times of prayer and impartation, is to open us to that point in the spirit where we are able to relate with spiritual things. For the Bible says, the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Why? Because it takes a level of discernment in the spirit to interpret it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I was excited when the Lord asked me to share what I'm about to share tonight. Because I believe that someone's life will never be the same in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching on a subject I title, Activating Breakthroughs. Activating Breakthroughs. And then you put a colon. The Ministry of Destiny help us. Activating Breakthroughs. Colon. The ministry of destiny help us.
The beauty of Christianity. Please listen. Look up. The beauty of Christianity is that every time we relate to God, either in worship, in fasting, in prayer, there is always a response from heaven. Hallelujah. A response from heaven to this earth realm. Hallelujah. And so God responds to us by releasing miracles, by releasing signs, wonders, by granting us the ability to partake of His success. Hallelujah. Christianity is very, will be very unfair on the part of God if the believers do not have an opportunity to participate in the love and the honor and the glory that God carries. I love the song that the worship team just rendered. That not only does God want to use us, but He wants us to have the opportunity to partake of everything that He has. It establishes our oneness and His desire to bless us. Hallelujah. And so the subject of breakthrough has been something on my mind. I've seen churches and ministries passionate about God, passionate about the things of God. I've seen ministries that fast, that pray, call upon the name of God. They walk in holiness and righteousness. But not many of their congregations ever truly experience breakthroughs. Hallelujah. The sick people come, they go back sick. The oppressed people come, they go back oppressed. The only notable thing that happens in that environment is that there are souls being saved. And while that is wonderful and great, what about families that are in bondages? What about destinies that have been tied down? What about people who need to step into the blessings of God? Hallelujah. And eventually, the congregations begin to ask questions and say, is, is God not interested in our personal well-being? Is He just interested in using us for His glory? Is He just interested in watching us pray and fast, you know, interceding for souls and so on and so forth. Is he just interested in seeing us serve him? What do we have? What package has he designed? Is he insensitive to our needs? Is he unaware of the challenges that our families have? Hallelujah. Is he aware that there are doors that have been closed over families and destinies? If yes, is he interested in doing anything about it? Hallelujah. And it's important that as we minister to God's people, we open them up to everything that can be obtained in God. By God's grace, we teach you prayer. We teach you how to walk in the Word. We teach you how to live in obedience to God. But we must also expose you to the dimensions of God that can release breakthroughs in your life. Hallelujah. That's why we take testimonies every week. As a symbol of what God is doing in the lives of His people. Because you see, when you receive personal results in your life, you are motivated to follow God. That may not be your primary reason, but it can motivate you. Is that true? When, when you receive phone calls like the gentleman who just shared, where's the gentleman that shared about his mom? You can imagine. Now he comes for the meeting and then while he's sitting under the atmosphere of God's presence, his mom gets healed somewhere. Hallelujah. Do you believe this guy has been motivated to press more into God? Believers are motivated if you... See, he said, when John the Baptist sent that they should ask Jesus Christ if he was the Messiah, he didn't answer the disciples. He just turned and began to heal the sick. Began to do miraculous things. And then when he was done... He told John, he told the disciples, say, go and tell John what you have seen. In other words, the kingdom of God should find visible expression. The kingdom of God represents the entirety of God's sovereignty. His power. If God is as powerful as we preach, if God is as great, if He's as loving and caring as we teach, then don't you think that at a point in your life, your life should experience some testimonies? that can encourage you, 
that you can have a message for yourself and say, I have seen the hand of God in my life. I have seen the intervention of God. I've seen breakthroughs in my families. And I told God something. I said, Lord, I never want to be part of a ministry that does not have results. Hallelujah. I don't want to just come and deceive God's people. And it's not enough just to fall down and stand up. If you're falling down, it's not producing results. You will get angry one day. Hallelujah. But thank God we have a God that is alive and is doing wonders in our midst. Hallelujah. And so I'm sharing on activating breakthroughs. In my personal life and in my journey in the Spirit, there are four things that characterize seasons of breakthrough in a man's life. Please take this teaching very seriously. Four things. Every time a man is about to step into prophetic defining moments, moments of breakthrough. I'm not just talking of one testimony here. Realms of breakthrough where God is about to step into a life and truly do something notable. There are four things that happen. When you approach that season of your life, I'm teaching you this so that you can know and relate with these seasons when they come. Hallelujah. Again, one of the things I learned watching the film Lord of the Rings is the fact that they were warriors from different kingdoms. And what made these people warriors was not just their ability to fight, but their ability to understand seasons. Hallelujah. When other men just stumbled into seasons, those men could look and discern. I remember one of them looking and seeing a red cloud and he said, blood had been shed in the night. The ability to look. When other people are just looking, you are standing from a plane in the spirit and you are saying, this has happened because something is happening. The wise men Hallelujah. The wise men saw a star. And while other people were saying, ah, ah, why is the earth shining like this? They understood that this is a message in the realm of the spirit that they ought to respond to. Hallelujah. So, while the star was supposed to lead men to where Jesus was, some other people just looked and they were moving around and they were happy. Yet, others were taking advantage of the season. So, I don't just want you to interpret the happenings around life from an earth realm. Hallelujah. I want you to be able to see prophetic things. That when you see handwritings on the wall, you don't just pass it. Many people have missed out on seasons of breakthrough. Because they have not been taught to discern moments of breakthrough in their life. Many families would have risen from where they are from where they are into the prophetic destiny that God has for them. But because they do not know how to understand spiritual things. So follow me tonight. Four things. Number one, when a major season of breakthrough is about to open up in your life, the first thing that happens is that there is an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer. An unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer. Whenever you begin to sense an irresistible urge to pray, an irresistible urge to pray, not just to pray with, in a group, know that these are prophetic signposts. These are languages in the spirit that are pointing to you that you are about to step into a major season of breakthrough. And I will explain to you why these things happen. Spirit of prayer. How many of you have sat down and suddenly you cannot tell? It's not like you are not prayerful. But maybe over a period of three or four days or one week you cannot rest. You are praying every time. You are partnering with what is happening in the realm of the spirit. You may not even know. But because you have yielded yourself to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit must not always speak to you. His ultimate um, desire is to lead you. Not just to speak to you. That your body comes to a point where even without speaking to you, you can permit him to carry out what The Bible says the Holy Ghost drove Jesus to the wilderness. 
He didn't say, Jesus, let's go. Jesus' body was so yielded to the Holy Ghost that he just found himself moving at the impulse of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the wind bloweth where it listed. You cannot tell where it's coming or where it's going. Such is one who is led of the Spirit. So every time you are about to step into prophetic seasons of breakthrough, you know what a breakthrough is? A breakthrough is when the barrier that is limiting you from stepping into the next level of your life is about to be lifted or is lifted. That's a breakthrough. When there is a stronghold, when there is a mountain, when there is a limitation, when there is a resistance that would not allow you to push through to that next level of life in destiny. By whatever spiritual agency, when that barrier is lifted, we call it a breakthrough. So number one, what? The spirit of prayer. Suddenly you see someone who may not even pray for an hour, but you find out that there is grace to pray. Grace to pray. While you're praying, it's like there's an endless supply. While you're praying, you can sense in the spirit that things are happening. You cannot tell what it is that is happening. But you know that the more you press, your prayer is doing something and is having an effect in your spirit directly. Sometimes you begin to pray and you get to a point in your spirit where you can even start laughing. I'm not talking of laughing in the spirit. Joy that you cannot explain. Because a cord is being hit in the spirit. But many people, when they get to that point, because they do not know the significance of that dimension of prayer, they do not partner with the angels to bring in complete breakthroughs. And they go back and miss out on cycles and seasons of breakthrough that would have come. Are you getting blessed? Number two, when you are about to enter a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life, the second thing that happens is an unusual grace to give. An unusual grace to give. An unusual grace. When you are about to step into those prophetic seasons, suddenly you lose value of everything around you. You just know that I can give anything and it won't matter again. When that begins to happen to you, take note. Have you gotten to a point where you sit down and just look at your clothes? And you can carry about 20 or 30 percent of them and just say, I'm going to sew it. And I tell you, there is a dissociation between you and those things, is because you are about to step into a new level. You see how many of you have missed out on such seasons because you did not know how to take advantage. If you could take advantage of it, you would have stepped into major seasons of breakthroughs. This that I'm teaching you is born out of the Word of God and practical experiences hallelujah there are many of you who can just be walking and the next thing god tells you go for a retreat quick you are supposed to travel god just summons you and says go for a retreat the moment that happens make sure nothing is too important to make you cancel that appointment hallelujah because that's not just your normal prayer for spiritual growth it is a call to contend with the things in the heavens so that you will step into a prophetic season in your life. So number one, the spirit of prayer. An unusual urge to pray, to travel in the spirit. You just find yourself blessing the Lord. You are sleeping in the night and God wakes you. That sleep cannot come back again. And you are just praying in the spirit. That's a sign that a dog it's about to open for you in the spirit. But many of you wake up. And when you see your colleague sleeping. Just say Kai. Let me just. 15 minutes exactly. By the grace of God I won't add 15 minutes. You even put one leg down on your bed. So that you can wake up. And you wake up and see that it's 6 o'clock. And you see. The Holy Spirit does not struggle with the human spirit. Are you listening to me? Because it's not a demon. The moment he begins to communicate to you, it's a language in the spirit. He's telling you, watch this. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Can you stand? So that you will step into this major season. Hallelujah. Number two, an unusual urge to give. 
not just i'm not just talking of giving money alone but suddenly you get to the point where nothing that you have is like a stream that connects the things that you have and you is suddenly broken away from your life and you know at that point if god asks you to empty your bank account or if god asks you to give anything you can lose it including your family members it's not like you don't love them i'm just giving you languages in the spirit you know that there's nothing nothing and you find out that you know that by the kind of songs you sing in your place of prayer you begin to sing songs of surrender and commitment you don't even know why you are singing those songs have they ever raised a song for you and you know this is not the song that communicates what god is saying it's not bad but mm -mm, this is not the song hallelujah when you step in church and they just sing a song we can sing a powerful song like um more of you more of you it's nice but it doesn't strike a chord in your spirit and even you you think you are backsliding no no you just sit down you are not you are not connecting you are even feeling guilty about it you are wondering why you are not connecting hallelujah then suddenly they raise another song i lay it all down again and you start crying you don't even know what is happening it's a reaction to a season that your spirit is relating with the moment they begin to sing that song, anything that has to do with laying it down forgetting about it you know your spirit picks it up and that's the song you're just singing may not make sense to you but you are getting into defining moments that will open up prophetic seasons of breakthrough are you getting blessed tonight number three when you are about to step into major seasons of breakthrough i mean major seasons number three there will be an unusual confrontation from the kingdom of darkness suddenly you notice that is as if all hell is breaking loose over you as if the satan i mean the devil just told all the demons said look just leave everybody chase wumi find wumi anywhere you see her look for her hallelujah have you seen people like that so it looks like the more they are praying for you the issue is getting worse hold on that's the time to begin to see from the realm of the spirit because many people are taught to judge these things. Do you know why? You see, Satan does not know your future. But the moment a prophetic word is uttered, what happens? There is an unusual manifestation of angelic activities. Suddenly, it sends a signal in the realm of the spirit. What? Because they know that Satan knows. He was an angel before, I hope you know. So he knows that every time there is an unusual dispatch of angels, something is about to be translated from the realm of the spirit into this realm hallelujah and suddenly confrontations from the power of darkness they begin to bring arrows of discouragement impatience procrastination offense suddenly you find out that a major season is about to enter your family and your father and mother are quarreling for trivial issues. Why did you bring the tea in this green cup? Is this the cup I use every day? And you are wondering, you are like, Daddy, what is this whole thing? If you learn to judge from the Spirit, you see why you start by unusual ability to pray. Because there will be contentions. Are you getting blessed tonight? Suddenly, you are just getting offended with people for reasons they cannot tell. Someone looks at you and says, beautiful hair. You say, hey, mock me. <sighs> Even you, you are finding what is wrong. People say, you are being so edgy. You are being offensive. What is wrong? Say, even me, I don't know what is happening. But God is telling you, go and pray. Because you are stepping into prophetic moments. Are you listening to me? The powers of darkness are finding access points that they can step into your life. And on legal grounds, hinder what God wants to do. Are you seeing why praise is a tool for victory? You see why God will give you? Are you seeing that? This is why sometimes when breakthroughs are about to come, God will distract you with praise. So that before you realize the breakthrough can come. 
So you lock yourself and you are just dancing in it. You don't even know why you are dancing. Because with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation. Many people have lost it at this point. Suddenly you find out that everybody is just offending you. You are about to go and pray. You are sensing in your spirit. And somebody comes and says, let me tell you something. Selina, um, I wouldn't have told you, but let me tell you. Do you know what your sister said? And you are like, what again? These are dangerous seeds that, that will stop you from entering prophetic moments of your life. Hallelujah. Or you are about to go and pray and then a call comes. And your mother says, do you know what happened? There was an accident. Ah -ah. In your dreams, you are seeing your family members rejoicing. You haven't seen them cutting cake. In the physical, you are hearing that one car has. At such times, many people just dampen their spirit. The Bible says, for as long as the hands of Moses kept it, it was up. What happened? There was victory. When Aaron and Hor were tired and they began to bring the hand, what happened? How can a man's hand control the victory that is happening in a war front? Many people do not understand spiritual pathways. And I'm telling you, the more you have this knowledge, the more you will reign in life. Unusual confrontations. In fact, for some of you, they may even be direct confrontations. You are just walking and for the first time you hear a voice saying you will die. You will die. And you carry that mindset. It's a seed that the devil wants to sow into your life. That's the day you got up and found out that your shirt that they eye on your roommate wore and say, hey, God, let me kill somebody today. Where is she? Prophetic moments. Notice that the moment that season is aborted, all those disturbances just minimize and you can live your normal life. Are you, are you listening to me? Prophetic seasons. And then number four. Number four is suddenly you will begin to attract certain people called destiny helpers. Destiny help us. There will be prophetic, unusual encounters. Please let me have two people. My God, open our eyes tonight. Teach us mysteries in the spirit. Come, you stand up here, Kenny. Sam, just stay down. Hallelujah. Watch this. This is a level. Look up, everybody. This is a level, is that correct? This gentleman wants to step into this level. And he has been walking. Now he has gotten to this prophetic shift. Hallelujah. While he's praying and fasting, this is what happens. Can I have a third person? Anybody? Thank you, Pastor Femi. Suddenly, God... You just be walking, sir. Yes, just be coming. And God comes and causes you to intercept at the exact time with certain people he calls destiny helpers. Their job, hold his hands, is to help you and guide you to step up and they will leave. Sam, you climb, climb up, let me go back. That's their job. Sometimes they will come into your life just once and you may never see them again. Follow me tonight. God bless you, sirs. Four things happen to believers. This is the structure of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. When Jesus was going to go and bring a major breakthrough to a man who was possessed of devils and to go and preach in Gadara, what happened? They were in the boat, in, a, in, a, in their boat. Is that correct? Suddenly, the sea started getting boisterous. Question. Was that the first time they were going by sea? I hope you realize that the sea was not just doisterous. It was the demons, the legions of devils that were in the man at Gadara that were reacting, attempting to stop them from coming. 
Hallelujah. Notice, did you notice that the disciples started getting angry at Jesus Christ? They got offended. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? When Jesus woke up, he knew that he needed to calm them down and he said, Shalom. What happened? The Bible tells us that that madman used to stay in caves. Who told him Jesus was coming? Because the moment Jesus stepped into Gadara, he was there waiting. He was the first person he met. Hallelujah. Did you hear the lady that came to share the testimony about her father? That ev how can a man be having accidents every month? When, I don't watch so much of football, but when you are in a serious match, I don't mean friendly, just to shake yourself and change jerseys. Real match that can change the destiny of a nation. Hallelujah. When you are about to score, what happens? The people, they tell them, do everything. Quacking, killing, just do everything. Stop this guy from stopping. You find out that the hostility increases. Because at that point, a single goal can make the difference. Are you understanding this? Many people and many families have missed out on cycles. It's like a spiritual cycle. When you miss it, it will come back. But it won't come back immediately so your job is to stand and discern when you see that cloud moving you begin to walk with the holy ghost to make preparations for the things that god wants to release hallelujah i'll not talk about the first three i'll talk very briefly about the last one destiny help us who are these men who are these strange beings that seem to come to to, to stand by people in the path of destiny. Please write. Destiny help us and men and women that we find on our road to breakthroughs. Our road to destiny. Who provide help for the next level of our lives, our miracles and our destiny. There are men that we meet on our path to destiny. I'm going to be showing you from God's word. And you'll see how consistent this is. Say in the name of Jesus. I activate breakthroughs in my life. The Bible says. In the book of Genesis 41. If you turn there the story of Joseph. Look up please. Joseph had a great destiny. Is that correct? He had a dream. And he told his brothers. He said, brothers, I saw you people bowing to me. The brothers said, you will see, we will kill you before that will happen. And they sold him. Is that correct? Do you realize, let me show you all the people that played a role in that journey. The Bible says, it was at the time he entered the well that certain Egyptians were passing. Why did they not pass before? Or after. Forget the fact that they bought him. But they were the vehicles that transported him. He didn't pay transport fare. They transported him. Into where? Potiphar's house. Do you know that Egypt. Was his geographical location. Of breakthrough. Are you listening to me? So how was he going to go there? His father would never allow him to go to Egypt. I hope you know. And so. Certain Egyptians, in the name of buying him, while they were carrying him, he did not know that prophetically there were angels and activities that were pushing him to the place of destiny. Hold on. When he gets to Egypt, the Bible says that he went into the prison. Now watch this. Every time you are about to take a journey into destiny, before you start, God will show you something that you will hold in that journey. For Moses, it is a rod. For Joseph, it is a dream. God will say, note it. One day, we will make reference to it. You will never start your journey without knowing what he gave you. Many of us have thrown it. That jar is it, it, no good because it does not look... For Moses, he said, you hold this rod. A day will come. When he got to that point in the Red Sea, he said, remember the rod. Now, Moses, stretch that rod. 
the time has come for the ministry of that rod to come in. Hallelujah. For Joseph, he had nothing but a simple dream. A simple dream. Are you following me tonight? He had a simple dream. And while these guys were taking, did he like it? But he was going to the geography of his breakthrough. When he got there, what happened? And this is the sign. Because while he was going, the Bible says God was with him. This is how you know God is with you. Because even in the midst of these things, you see favor. The favor and the grace of God. And the Bible says he went into prison. What happened? He was faithful. And Potiphar made him the head of everything except his wife. Watch this. Then comes this dangerous woman who sees this handsome Egyptian. Hallelujah. And on account of his work with God and his loyalty to his master, what happened? The Bible says he ran and he left his clothes there. Do you know if Joseph had slept with her, he would have just been happy and gone back to the prison in the evening and he would have remained there. Who would know that he slept with her? But he would have remained in the prison there. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Joseph was in the prison and God made it in such a way that it was when Joseph was coming to the prison that the wine presser and the baker for some reasons they annoyed the king. The king said go and love them. The king less explained, they go and love them. And while they love them there, then Joseph steps in. Watch this. He looks at them and Joseph is worried about their state. They woke up in the morning and the Bible says their countenance was very bad. Hallelujah. And the wine presser said, I have a dream. Why did God create a need that only the gift in Joseph could solve? Are you following me now? God knew that he had given Joseph grace for dreams. Then he created that need. And the one presser got up. Please listen. He said, I had a dream. I saw this and that and that. And this and that happened. And Joseph told him, he said, wow. In three days, the king is going to call you back and you'll be reinstated to your position. The guy laughed. He said, please, when you go, don't forget me. The other guy said, ah, me too, I have my own home. He said, what is wrong? He said, there were three baskets on my head and vultures came and ate everything. Joseph said, well, in three days, they'll finally finish up your case. They'll bring you out and they'll go and hang you and the birds of the air will eat up your flesh. Watch this. Joseph did not know that those two people, they did not have gift, but they had access to the king that could bring Joseph. Are you seeing? Destiny helpers may not be gifted people, but they have access. You have the gift, but you don't have access to the king. They have access to the king, but they may not have the gifts. Hallelujah. It came to pass like that. And after the wine presser was reinstated, the Bible says he forgot Joseph. But watch this. When it was time for Joseph to step into the place of destiny, what happened? God now, since the wine, the wine presser forgot him, I'm sure Joseph would have been disappointed. You now see that? He would have been angry and said, Oh, two years, this guy kept me in this captivity and I helped him. But something happened. The Bible says that... God gave the king a dream. You see it now? When God is ready to lift you, those who matter, he will give them a problem they cannot solve and shut every door until your gift answers to it. That's how God lifts a man. Please listen, I'm teaching you a powerful mystery. Because every king, they had sorcerers and soothsayers. This is Egypt we are talking about. Egypt had thousands of gods they could consult. But that day God shut the heavens. The magicians did everything. The heavens would not open. And the king said, you better answer my dream. You better find the solution. Kings were cruel people those days. They could wipe out the whole land because they were angry. Suddenly the magicians consulted and said, what is happening? They said, we don't know. And then the wine presser said something. Watch this. 41. 
Verse 9. 41. Verse 9. Are you there? Then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. So after two years, the man remembered. Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in prison. In the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. Listen. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dreams. Listen. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, now hold on. Do you know, while all of this was happening, Joseph did not know that he was at the edge. Are you listening to me? If he had missed a defining moment, he would have remained in that prison. Sometimes, could it be that you are just a night away to a major breakthrough in your life? Have you heard that song? I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. Powerful song. Many believers have gotten to the edge and then Satan comes in with something that aborts the whole journey. Thirteen, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us. So it was. Now, listen. If Joseph had his way, listen. If Joseph had his way and he ever met Pharaoh once, do you know Pharaoh will be so impressed with Joseph that you say, why are you in the prison in the first place? But sometimes, do you see the irony of life. You can see a gifted person who graduated and he's so good. And here is somebody who is a blessed man who needs that gift. But the, that contact. Are you listening to me? There are many of our loved ones that are gifted. I heard the story of a gentleman who fan caught his, some of his fingers. And then suddenly it was like an anointing came upon him. And that guy could draw, you know, um, fine art students. He could do what they call it, um, abstract on the wall. Praise God. And then this guy had been praying to God and said, Lord, give my family a major breakthrough. Because his mother told him, I didn't go to school. Your hands are cut, but do something. Go and learn something. And this guy was praying, watch this. When that was happening, the Holy Ghost began to give him ideas. He said, begin to do your abstract on plenty of papers and store them. Every time you see this guy drawing, people are saying, your colleagues are going out to look for a job. He said, but God told me this. Watch this. Suddenly, one day, he went to visit his friend. Huh? When he went to visit his friend, his friend was talking with someone and it so happened that they just opened the branch. This is a true story. They opened the branch of a bank. You know banks do abstract on their wall. And they had been looking for someone. The person who used to do it for the bank, he did something nasty and the bank got angry with him. And suddenly they just said, ah, but don't you draw. The guy came there with his file. He was ready. They said, meet at so, so, so place. And he went, do you know that, that day, he got a contract of over 4 million naira overnight. Why? Hold on. It wasn't just because the people that connected him did not even know the gravity of what they were doing. Do you realize that your destiny helpers do not know their destiny helpers? God conceals it so that they will not corrupt what he's trying to do through them. The destiny helpers themselves never know their destiny helpers until the miracle happens one day when you are saying it. The wine presser, if the wine presser knew that he was sitting close to someone who would be the prime minister of, of Egypt, you think you would treat him the way he treated him? Hallelujah. And then, let me rush. They called Joseph. I like, I like, I like the way. Let's look at um, verse 14. 14. Are you there? 41 verse 14. And Pharaoh sent, listen. Pharaoh sent at the recommendation of who? A destiny helper. The wine presser. The wine presser said, I testify that there was a time I needed help. Hallelujah. And a Hebrew guy called Joseph. By this time, do you know what it means to stay two years in the prison without shaving? 
Without, you don't have the luxury of shaving and this. You were looking like a, a native doctor. And the Bible says, I'll show you from scripture. Verse 14. And Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of where? The dungeon. It's only your destiny partner that can connect you to come out of some dungeons. You may be gifted, but you will remain in some dungeons. Until some destiny partners come. Do you know that many of our family members, they are praying in tongues and they are gifted. Let me announce to everybody here, there is something you have that is in desperate demand. The distance between you and your place of honor is a destiny helper. If you never find these destiny helpers, you can die a failure in life. I've seen this happen so many times. Hallelujah. When we were about to get the venue for this place, when God began to speak to us about Koinonia, we were praying. You know how difficult it is to get venue. Hallelujah. We were even looking for a place to pay for. And I began to pray. I began to pray. And I had a number of options. And when I was praying, the Lord showed me, said, you will use CGC. I really didn't know. I administered only once or twice in the ministry. I said, Lord, how can you use people's auditorium? And then you start. And God said, you hold on. But he had taught me the ministry of destiny helpers. So I knew better. Are you following me now? And I knew which tool to engage. Not random, foolish prayer, pointless arrow. You have AK-47, you are just shooting everywhere. You need to direct with target. That's what many believers are doing. We just pray what we do not know. The Bible says through wise counsel make war. You can, you can minimize wasting bullets. Many people just pray everywhere and say break through wherever you are. Let him meet you. Calm down. You can walk with wisdom and walk circumspectly. I began to pray because I knew that all I needed was a test. Do you know it does not take more than 24 hours for God to change a man's story? God just needs to bring a man. Your father has been praying. He's a good architect. And there are people begging. Begging. They want to build estates. They are begging. Can there be something that will happen in the realm of the spirit? See, there's no time I would have given you stories of how people's lives have changed overnight. I hope you believe what I'm teaching tonight. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Joseph, the Bible says, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh and said, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Hallelujah. And then he interprets the dream. Verse 32. It's amazing when your gift begins to speak in the place where it is honored. Do you know something? Listen. Your gift will never speak in a place they don't value and honor it. Hallelujah. That's why you can see someone who is a worshiper. He goes somewhere to minister. It's not the place of his honor. They don't even honor it. But he can step into another place. Your gift will always create an effect where it was designed to be honored. Always. Hallelujah. 32. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God. And God will shortly bring it to pass. Look at the ease at which Joseph was interpreting this dream. And the magicians were all watching. God orchestrated an event where all the all the Senate members of Egypt were gathered and they were listening. See, listen. Whenever God begins to prepare a table before you, learn to discern from the Spirit because He will be taking you to a place you never dreamt of. He'll lead me and guide me to the city up above. He'll lead me 
and guide me to my place of destiny. I know He leads me and He guides me to the city of above. Lord, You lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. Hallelujah. 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh seek out a man. He didn't know he was talking about himself. Desperate and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in seven plenteous years, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up grain under the hand of Pharaoh, and let him keep food for the city. Just John verse 39. This is where a man's breakthrough comes. After 12 years of misery, being transported into his destiny by people he did not like, facing situations he did not know were orchestrating themselves for his lifting. 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown ye all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Immediately, without prayer, without fasting, help me read verse 41 to read. And thou shalt be over my house. No interview. No meeting with any council member. Kings did not make stupid decisions. They met with their wise men. But the king announced he vetoed it. Thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Five minutes ago, a prisoner. Five minutes later, the prime minister. My God, how can you explain this? The people who shaved him, say so we were shaving the prime minister. The people who dressed him. And imagine Pharaoh. Who took him to the prison? I mean Potiphar. Now he had become Lord. Imagine what Potiphar's house wife would do. Hear me friends God is in the business of changing the lives and the stories of men and of families. It does not cost him so much. All you need is the man that requires what God has given you. He leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. Your mother has a large poultry farm. There is a major hotel that is being constructed. One manifestation of destiny helpers at a recommendation. They can begin to say, Madam, begin to supply this hotel for as long as the hotel lives. See, friends, every man I know who has been blessed in any area of life got to a point in his life where he was led by destiny helpers to enter fearful mind blowing and irrecoverable parts of destiny let's look at Jesus we call him the king of kings we call him the lord of lords but let's see all the people that play different parts in the life of Jesus did you know the Bible says, I don't know if I should read it. Alright, let's read it. Luke 2. Let's hurry up. Because we are going to do some prayer this night. Hallelujah. Prayer this night. I shared it with the leaders on Sunday. God began to speak to me that a breakthrough anointing is coming upon the house in a very, very, very significant way. And we prayed in that light. Luke 2. Verse 25. Luke 2 verse 25. This is the story of Jesus. Are you there? And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was a righteous and devoted man, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus. Hold on. Look up guy called Simeon. Hallelujah. The Bible says God told him he would not see death. His job was to wait 
until he prophesies into the life of Jesus before he would die. Are you seeing? We don't hear the names of all these people in scripture. But tonight I want to show you people who took the destiny of Jesus and passed the button for him to become our savior. Hallelujah. And then he prayed and prophesied. Let's look at verse 36. So one destiny helper we see in the life of Jesus. Simeon. Number 2. 36 now. And there was one Anna. Listen to how the Bible describes her. What does he call her? One Anna. Hold on. He said one Anna. And one Anna. There was one Anna. Hold on. But without that one Anna, there will be no Jesus. There will be no redemption of mankind. There was one Anna, a prophetess. The daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. He said, and she was of a great age and had lived with, with a husband seven years from her virginity. Seven years and the man died. So what was she doing with the remaining part of her life? Let's read on. And she was a widow about four score and four, 84 years. So for all that remaining time, 84 years, the Bible says, who departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayer night and day. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spoke of him to all those who looked for the redemption of Israel. She was the woman who was praying that Jesus be born. Are you seeing that? There was a woman behind the scene, a destiny helper, praying and fasting at age 84. That Jesus, will, that the word has been prophesied. Let me tell you, if there were no people to pray, they would have killed Jesus because the people would not be sensitive to angelic activities. They would have killed him and there would not be redemption for mankind. Destiny help us. We don't honor them. The Bible never talks about Simeon again. The Bible never talks about Anna again. Are you following me, please? Destiny help us. At the death of Jesus, the Bible says, listen, that when Jesus had carried the cross, he had bled so much, and the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. He carried the cross to the point that this was him and the place that would bring redemption for mankind. But there was no more strength. And what happened? He fell. At the point where he was falling, one black man meandered that road called Simon of Cyrene. Are you following me now? And they said, Simon, come. They didn't ask him whether he had eaten or not. They didn't ask him where he was going. They just said, Mr. Man, pick up this cross. What happened? A destiny helper. He carried the cross. Cruel men. No devil can resist your destiny helpers. If you, These were men who would not allow Jesus to drink water. But they allowed a man to carry his cross for him. And Simon helped Jesus. And so Jesus could regain some strength. The Bible says that when Jesus died, there was another strange rich man called Joseph of Arimathea. He had a virgin tomb because the prophets had, been, had prophesied that none of his bones would be broken and that he would be buried in a tomb that is virgin. So, God had led one man to buy grave. How can a man buy a tomb and keep it for his own death? He didn't even know why he bought it. Remember when Jesus wanted to come in the triumphant entry. The Bible says a man had tied a coat. He didn't tell us the man. He said, go and tell the man the master had me. At once, he released the coat. Are you seeing all the people that played parts? When you watch your Jesus of Nazareth, they silence those people. And so you don't even know. You just see Jesus. But without these people in his life, the Bible talked about the wise men once. They didn't tell us anything about them again. He talked about the shepherds. They didn't tell us anything about them again. Now Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says Joseph of Arimathea was an influential man. It was on account of his influence. So a rich man was required for the redemption of men. He was the rich man that used his influence. And went and said, give me the body of this man. Let me bury. If not, they would have left Jesus to hang on the cross there. Are you listening to me? Now we don't follow up these stories very well. And they took him to a virgin tomb. And they laid him there. Look at all the people that played roles. 
in the life of Jesus Christ. Moses, another man. The Bible says, when they were killing Hebrew children, you remember? His mother put him in a basket. The word Moses means to come out of a basket. The mother put him in a basket. And do you know that she put a Hebrew material in the basket and pushed him? How can a mother? That was a sign of desperation. She said, let me just push him. Oh God, guide him. Suddenly, the water started leading Moses to a place. For no reason, Pharaoh's daughter just said, I have not taken my bath. Don't they have bathrooms? Say, I will go to the stream. This stream. At the exact point where the baby was coming, that was when she was bathing. And the Bible says she had the sound of a child. She would have said, go and kill him. When she saw it, she started laughing. Her father gives an instruction to kill people. The daughter is saving the major person who they were supposed to kill. Destiny help us. Look at the drama that happens in the spirit. Your father gives an instruction. It was really Moses they were looking for. But now, Moses was in the house and they were killing other people. That was the deliverer. The mother, a Hebrew woman, she didn't have much. But do you know what happened? When they pushed Moses, the daughter got and then the maid of the mother came and suggested, say, do you want a nanny? They said, of course. He went and brought Moses' mother to come and be a nanny for her own son and they paid her for it. Destiny help us. I want you to see that this is no coincidence at all. No threat. Moses grew up. He ate well. He was nourished. No jointies. No nonsense because there was an assignment waiting for him. He was in perfect shape. Hallelujah. Have you been taking note of certain people? Many of us have been cheated because we have neglected these strange sets of people. We live in a generation where all we are looking for is men of God. Could it be that after the prophecy from the men of God, there are ordinary people? Some of you come for koinonia and you sit down close to the person who can suggest something to you that will change your life forever. Are you getting blessed? The Bible tells us that a man called Saul was persecuting Christians everywhere and having met with God, with Jesus Christ, on the road to Damascus. He said he should go to the house of who? Judas. And stay there. Who is that Judas? We don't know. He just said go and stay in his house. Destiny help us. He stayed there three days. And then... They sent a man called Ananias. We heard about him once. Didn't hear about him again. And Ananias came and said, Brother Saul, Jesus whom you saw sent me, that I should lay my hands upon you, that you should be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive your sight. When that happened, he went. The Bible says a certain time came, they met one prophet called Agabus. He came out from wherever we don't know. A man called Agabus. All his daughters were prophets. And he gave a prophecy. Hallelujah. You read all through the Bible and see several people. Ruth and Naomi haven't lost her husband, haven't lost everything. The Bible says that Ruth told Naomi, say, my God will be your God. and my, Your God will be my God, your people, my people. The Bible says, while this a man just came out from wherever. Called Boaz. And he told the people, we don't know who those people are. He said, as you glean, leave some of the food. Their names were not mentioned. Just leave some food so that she can go and take care. Brothers and sisters, if you miss the ministry of destiny helpers in your life, listen to me. You may never arrive your destiny, no matter what kind of prophecy is given unto you. There are many women who will not get married because the person who will connect them with their life partner is not there. Someone can just tell you, come, come with us. Hallelujah. Let's go for fellowship somewhere. Pastor um, Femi, stand up. 
just go and stand there. And God will orchestrate it in a way. Please sit down. Make yourself very comfortable. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now this lady sits down. She has been praying for a life partner. If you have not been praying about it, you better start praying. She has been praying. Oh God, a godly man. A man who loves and fears you. And what happens? We cannot even find a friend again who invited her. And she sat down. And while she sat down, Sam is worshipping. Now listen. Come Sam. Sam gets up. And Sam is lifting his hands. As we lift our hands in worship, as we praise your holy name, you deserve the glory. What happens? While Sam is moving left and right, doing the business of the Father, suddenly, Sam finds out that he's been drawn to this room. Sam will move this way. And Sam will be drawn. And then a preacher like me will say, talk to your neighbor and say, it's your time to be blessed. And Sam turns and says, your time to be blessed. And the Holy Ghost will say, did you hear what you said? Hallelujah. A few years after they are happily married. And when you ask them what happened, they say someone. That's what they say. Someone. The someone may be in the congregation, but may not even know that he or she was the person who made this happen. Are you listening to me? destiny help us. Many people have missed out. Every time you are entering a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life, make sure you begin to handle with utmost respect the people that begin to come around you. Because some of them may not even be Christians. Somebody can just come drunk with beer. It may even be your loved one. And for the first time, you will say something sensible in years. You say, ah, you didn't go for fellowship this night. Then you hiss and go back. And God will say, your address. As you are coming in, that's when God will step into your life in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Men who do not know these principles die as failures in life and wonder, oh God, why are you not changing my story? Hallelujah. This is very important. I have seen this happen in my life. When God showed me that this would be the venue, how it was going to happen, I knew. Listen, the next time you are trusting God for a breakthrough in your life, don't think He's just going to come by an angel flapping His wings and says, Take. Men, men have been God's instrument of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Are you receiving something tonight? Am I challenging you? And then we met Prof. And Prof just came and spoke to the church once. Once. And they came till today. Since we started in March 2011, we have not had to pay one naira for this auditorium to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ in this same area destiny help us it's not a big thing for it's not a big deal for many of you until the day you get into positions where you will require the help of men are you listening to me many of us have pushed our destiny help us away either because they do not carry forms that's the problem we have with people who segregate people we are not the rich ones. We are the ones who our fathers are senators. What is your father? Capital, leave this place. We are the ones who are intelligent. What's your CGP? 1.5. Get out of here. Hallelujah. We are the ones who are smart. We attended Queen's College. Which church did you, which, which school did you attend? One school, they have even forgotten the name. Leave this place. We are the ones who went abroad. We spent six years abroad. Where have you gone out from? I've just been in my local government. I've not even gone out. Leave this place. When you begin to treat people that way, 
get set for a root shock in life. Because your destiny helpers will never assume forms that will attract you to them. You must have a discerning grace to look beyond them. Some of them may be visitors. Every time they come to your house, you know they are coming to collect your father's money. But maybe that day, maybe that day, that day, it could be some gatekeepers in your house. Every time you look at them, Adamu, Adamu, how I say, well done, how are you? You are insulting the man. One day you look and say, sorry. I saw one application. There's one newspaper here. You say, let me see. And you just find out that they need exactly what you want. And it will change your life and your story forever. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I was told the story of a lady who had been trusting God for breakthrough. Hallelujah. And the day they called her for a job interview, in all sincerity, she did not have any money. The mom did not have money there. And it was her neighbor who was a gate man. She begged him. It took a lot of humility for her to beg him. The guy said, give me my money. I said, make sure you give me. And I think he gave her, was it 500 or 200? She transported herself, got that job. When she got the job, they were going to lodge her in a five-star hotel for one month first. Where they would take her. Are you listening to me? Gave her 0.8 million to be able to get a nice house. This is true life story. Hallelujah. All that lady, that lady bought a bike and came and gave the gate man. The gate man was resting. Little did he know his breakthrough was coming. She just gave him a bike. He left the work immediately. Immediately. Many of you in life, listen to me. This is a powerful message. Many of you in life have neglected certain people. You may stand and look at this brother and just say, Kite, I beg Jerry. Many of us relate with people only based on what we can get from them. You need to stop that demonic attitude. The day I don't need anything from you, you are not my friend again. The day necessity brings it, suddenly, ah, ah, Pastor Femi, we need venue. You are his friend. If that is your attitude, you will miss out on many prophetic. You can see someone. The person is wearing a shoe that is not very nice. Thank God for the 10,000 naira one your father bought for you. The person may not have what you have, but he has that. He knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that can open the door that your family has. Every prayer point has a human being as the answer somewhere. Every prayer point. Every prayer point. I tell you, if you are praying for a job, that job is available somewhere and it is at a platter of gold. One note can change a man's destiny. Activating breakthroughs to the ministry of destiny helpers. Could this be why some of us are where we are today? Could it be that that's why some of our family members are where we are? The gentleman that always comes to your father and your father says, don't tell him that I'm around. Could it be that that very day he came with a news that will set the family forever and the person will live and go forever? We are going to be praying. Hallelujah. We are going to be crying for a restoration of destiny helpers that we have allowed to slip to our hands. We are going to be praying for sensitivity. Many of you treat everybody bad. You treat people rude. You are hostile. You talk to people. You say, that's how I am. Because you feel you have your world met together. A day will come. You will find out that what you have, you don't have access to a king. And it is God that will connect you there. Hallelujah. Today, by the grace of God, many places where I go and minister, I don't know those who told them about me. They just said, we heard about you. Who were the people who popped? The Bible said it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town. We do not know. I only will pray for those people in my secret place that God will bless and honor them. You may never know. Never know. Sometimes we just get seeds from people. Coming into the ministry account, we don't even know the people. Could it be that one destiny helper shared his testimony one day are you listening to me see i am convinced that it does not cost god a fortune to cause a major prophetic breakthrough in your family i was told about a man 
who had been saving to buy some cars, you know, just a, a, a little car. And then one day, when he was going to buy the car, God sent him to go and um, greet, you know, like their elder ones, like an uncle. So when he went to go and greet the uncle, he was sitting outside. These are true stories. He was sitting outside. And then a rich man came in to see the uncle. And then he told him, he said he should wash his car for him. And he started washing the car. Of course, he sounded insulting. But then that's a big man. He was washing the car. Then when he was washing the car, the uncle didn't see for hours they were gisting. He washed the car, cleaned it, and sat down. He was even getting angry. When they came out, the uncle was hostile to him. He said, why have you come to see me? Don't you see that I have meetings? The, the rich man asked him, he said, what is it? He said, I just came to tell you that I gathered some small money. I want to buy a car. And then the rich man asked, just jokingly, he said, what car? He said, go off the man lap. He said, is that a car? He said, the next day you should come and meet him in his office. I'm telling you, I lie not. He gave him a brand new Toyota the next day. See, let me tell you something. It's not everything that money can do. Learn this early enough. Because many people brag with the monies of their parents. My father is a senator. My mother is a this. There are many people who were healed in Koinonia here. We still do not know who brought them. Someone referred them on the road. Told them, do this, do that. And they came and they got healed. I made up my mind never to. That's why I treat people with love and honor and respect. You don't know who. It could be a little girl like this, my sister. She may just look at you and pray a prayer for you. And say, God just asked me to touch your head and just touch your head and say, bless you. Suddenly, you see every door opening and you are like, what in the world is going on? Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Sometimes God can lead you to a meeting. You don't know the name of the ministry. You don't know the name of the man of God. You don't know the name of anybody. You don't know the ushers that brought you. All you know is that one word was declared. You carry that word, you went back. Most times, you never get to see your destiny helpers to tell them thank you. There are only few times you get to meet them. Four things that define prophetic moments of breakthrough. Number one, the spirit of prayer. Grace to pray like never before. Number two, a heart to give. Suddenly there is a dissociation between you and whatever it is that you have. Number three. Demonic confrontations that attempts to discourage you. Number four. They begin to come. Destiny help us. They come as phone calls. They come as friends. They come as enemies. They come as unprofitable situations. They come as hostile, different things. Hallelujah. I'll never forget someone who had an issue with his supervisor. From a year student some years ago, he had a very serious issue with the supervisor. And the supervisor would not even look at him. And somehow, somehow, people began to mediate. Another lecturer was mediating. And when he finally got to called the guy in. They began to talk. After insulting him and shouting and doing every kind of thing. He said, where are you from? And that was where a conversation started. And they wouldn't end that conversation until after three hours. That guy found out that there were certain opportunities he desired that that student had ways. He knew his father could help out and so on and so forth. He was actually a property the man, the lecturer wanted to sell. And then he got to find out that the boy's father was a real estate agent. They exchanged numbers there. And that man's life changed. Who have you been neglecting? God is asking you a question. Don't look at your neighbor. Who have you been neglecting? Because they may not speak English like you. Because they may not. They are not charismatic as you. Who have you been neglecting? Because they don't belong to your church. Or they don't come for koinonia. Or because they are not Pentecostals. Huh? Because they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, there's this rubbish association of 
religious things that go on. We are the ones who pray. We are the ones who fast. We are the ones who, who, we are the ones who know God. God will always use the most unlikely means. Never forget this message. Could it be that your destiny helper is here in Koinonia, sitting close to you? Hallelujah. When my younger brother was very small, he drank paint one day, took a cup of paint and drank it. And he fell down there and fainted. Created commotion and everybody was just running helter-skelter. They took him to the hospital. But that was an opportunity because people came to greet. Hallelujah. And there were certain people my father wanted to see who would not respond to him. They came to greet my brother. And finally some opportunities he was trusting God for came by. I'm teaching you wisdom tonight. Many of you will need to call your parents and tell them, you stop insulting everybody that comes. It doesn't matter what they have done. God can still use them to be the ladder for you to step into destiny. There are some of you here. There are people that you can never look eyeball to eyeball with. You swear as it till Jesus comes because of what you did to my mother, because of what you did to my father. They gave us one thirty thousand to share. My my young, my elder brother gave me two k. And when may God punish you for as long as I live, calm down. Do you know that one day a door can be opened? I pray every time, and I tell God, there are destiny partners that are attached, destiny helpers attached to this ministry. There are destiny helpers attached to my life. There are destiny helpers attached to your life. Once again, let me use this last example. And we'll pray. Two people, one stand here, one stand here. Anybody? You, my brother? Just stand there. Never forget this. The distance between you and your breakthrough is not as far as you see. I don't care what it is. Hear me. The distance between you. It could be a carryover cause you are praying. And say, oh God, but they can wave this thing. And you have done everything you know to do. One day, God can just send someone and they'll be discussing about you in the office. And they'll say, please help this person. He has tried. The distance between you is a destiny helper. And I'm telling you, it can be seconds away. It can be minutes away. Only learn to recognize destiny helpers. They will come in forms that you will not appreciate them. After the grace here, there are people who come and just look. There are some people who just send me text messages. With one scripture. Jokingly, they did not even know. I don't know them, I don't have their numbers. But that one scripture just gives an insight to something God has been attempting to communicate to me. Destiny help us. We are going to cry unto God. Are you ready to pray? God bless you. Rise up on your feet. Say the distance between me. Say it as loud as you can. The distance between me and my breakthrough is a helper away. Say the distance between my family and their breakthrough is a helper away. Prayer point number one. You are going to cry unto God. And say, Lord, I, I repent of people I have neglected. I, I want you to really pray. And say, people I have kicked out of my life. Destiny helpers that would have taken me to a glorious level in my life by now. Lift your voice and pray. People who would have given me relevant information. Those who would have connected me. With help us. Lift your voice and pray. Some of our family members are struggling aimlessly. Because there are people who can help. Wine pressers. Bakers. Men who can take you to the king. It's not as hard as it seems. I am convinced. It's a destiny help by way. 
no matter what you need financial breakthrough a miracle a prophetic word direction in your life say Lord I repent for neglecting destiny help us I've let them come and pass I refuse to activate defining moments in my life pray on behalf of your family say Lord for my father for my mother for my brothers they would have gotten jobs by now they would have built houses by now they would have gotten contracts by now doors would have opened that terminal disease would have left by now my family would have been together by now but for the neglect of destiny help us hallelujah prayer point number two and I want you to pray this with all your heart he said I will restore to you you are going to pray and say Lord let that cycle come back again in my life let that cycle I missed as a result of childlessness or pride or arrogance or insensitivity lift your voice say Lord let the helpers come again Lord let financial helpers come Lord, let marital helpers come. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, let academic helpers come. The distance between you and your breakthrough is your wine presser, is your wine baker. It's not hard. Is there anything too hard for God to do? I'm telling you, in one day, God can change your story. In one day, God can change the story of your family members. Restore. Pray. Restore. For my family. Restore, oh God. Opportunities that have been lost. Opportunities. Send them again, oh God. Help us of destiny. Send them again. Reactivate breakthrough. Reactivate breakthrough. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a little story. I have a friend. Listen to me. I have a friend in Abuja. This guy went to Abuja, a poor, broke person with nothing but his faith. Hallelujah. And this guy had been praying and said, Lord, change my story. Help me. This guy was crying praying people told him and you said stupid boy you got up and came to Abuja no house no car no nothing this guy was praying and one day it always happens one day you don't even know that's why you must be prepared he was just sitting down and a friend called him he said where are you he said come quick this guy just ran and he entered the room and he saw a big man and some people were talking and he said, I wanted to involve you because God asked me to bless you. <laughs> and he sat down and the rich man was going to buy a plot of, a, buy some plots of land. 720 million. 720 million. And 10% goes to the agents. So they brought him. This guy became a millionaire overnight. He didn't do anything. They just brought him and counted the number of people. The 10% agency fee was what changed his life. Yet, there are many tongue-talking estate agents who have been in Abuja since 1990, since 1999, praying and running with complimentary cards. This guy was wearing palms. He wasn't wearing a suit. Palms! And his life changed overnight. Brothers and sisters, if you ever forget anything this night, remember that your prayer request is in the hands of a man. It takes God, who is the father of spirits, to connect the lines. And that's going to be our next prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, by the instrument of the prophetic, I call forth they that have been destined to take 
take me to the next level to take my family. Make sure you are praying. Lord, prophetically, pray. Those who will open doors of jobs, doors of marriages, doors of ministry, doors of anointings, doors of favor, doors of lifting, doors of success, doors of increase, doors of breakthrough. Make sure you are praying. Pray it with all your heart. Your family story can change. You have been praying and fasting. Could this be the message? Could this be the message? Pray. Say, Lord, whether in Lagos or Abuja or Kano or Sanfara, the United States, the Caribbean, by the prophetic power of the Spirit, let there be a connection. Orchestrate a meeting. Let there be a meeting. Pray. Pray. God wants to take you from this level to another. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Exploits by the Spirit. Your story can change. Activate defining moments. Activate breakthrough in your life. Come on, prophesy. I call them. They are coming into my life from the north, the east, the south. I pray for E and I. Destiny help us are coming. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. Hallelujah. Let me give you one little story. Look at me. When Professor Madi was the Vice Chancellor of Amadou Bello University, many of you did not meet him. There was a gentleman who did very well, but he did not get admission. Hallelujah. And the guy just went, for reasons he could not explain, he went and sat down near the Senate in the night. And Professor Madi had the culture of walking into students' hostels, walking around just to see what is going on. And when he walked, he saw the gentleman and he called him. He said, why are you sitting down here? He said, sir, look at my WIAC results. Look at everything. But my catchment area is not there and they didn't give me admission. He said, you are such a brilliant boy. Do you know what he told him? He said, go home and pack your load and come back. When he came back, they had printed his, admi his admission letter. This is true. It's a confirmed story. Hallelujah. I know about a student who had been victimized for years till he was in 300 level. Whatever it is that happened, either his name or his matriculation number clashed. And what this guy was seeing was not his real CGPA. This guy would work so hard, but when the exams come out, he would not be. And then one day, someone just came in and for whatever reason, the person decided to start cross-checking things. The next thing, they put on the notice board that they wanted to see him. When they called him, they said he should go and bring his results and his courses that he registered. Do you know, true life story, when they, this guy was at, at maybe around 1.7 something, by the time they corrected everything, he was supposed to be in 2-1. In all sincerity, my cousin, my cousin was a student in this school. My cousin was a student in this school. He wrote a major exam that he got A. And when the result came out, they gave him F. This guy didn't know. He knew that he had, he had read. But you see, sometimes, even when you have the evidence, you don't have access to the king. There are many of us that have evidences that would wipe our night time. But that access to the king. Hallelujah. And one day God raised a visiting prof who just came and he just complained and showed him everything. The man took on the case by himself until they rectified it. Look at me for a moment. What do you expect God to do in your life and in your family? It's in the hands of someone. It's in the hands of someone. That breakthrough is in the hands of someone. A house to complete. 
for your loved ones to go to school. Let me tell you, no matter what it is, expand your mind tonight. There are men who are carriers of miracles. They don't even know. There are some of you that your loved ones need some jobs. They have been suffering. You know that they want to change where they are working or they don't even have a job. They are praying. They are applying CV after CV. If it is destiny help us, they will accelerate your path. You will jump protocols. We are going to pray. Say, Lord, I receive discernment to see these people when they come into my life. Lift up your voice and pray. It takes discernment. It takes discernment. It takes discernment. Say, Lord, let me discern. They may not be my tribe. They may not be my friends. They may be the enemies of our family. But Lord, grace to discern when you are about to use them to change our story. Hallelujah. Final prayer point. Now you are going to pray. And speak over your life. And tell yourself you are breaking through. And breaking forth on the left and right. Don't keep quiet. Please. Don't keep quiet. Prophesy. I break through. From the left. The right. The east. The west. Oh hallelujah. I activate breakthroughs. I establish it in the name of Jesus by the spirit of prayer. I contend against every power of darkness. Come on, pray. Pray against every satanic force. Pray against every power of darkness that wants to attempt to abort your breakthrough. God wants you to smile. God wants you to smile. God wants you to smile. He wants to encourage you. He wants your life to be fruitful. Satan, get lost. Be lifted all ye gates. Let the family of Koinonia receive breakthroughs. I prophesy breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. Marital breakthrough. Family breakthrough. Academic breakthrough. Spiritual breakthrough. Breakthrough in your job. Let your family members smile. I provoke it from the realm of the spirit. I provoke it from the heavens. I activate the angelic. I activate the angelic. Let angels begin to move to every family. Let angels begin to move over your academic. Angels move over your finances. Angels move over your family. Angels move. I activate the operation of angels. Contend with the powers in the heavens and release breakthroughs for God's people. Let the angelic contend with the powers that delay, that stop people from entering their prophetic breakthrough. I release breakthroughs. I release breakthroughs. I release breakthroughs. I speak it in your life. I send an anointing into your life. A breaker anointing. A breakthrough anointing. I send it into your life. I send it into your academics. I send it into your family. I send it into your finances. Those you do not know, I cause them to arise and help you. I cause them to arise and help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. Everywhere your gift is needed, I command them to begin to talk about you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I activate breakthrough for you. In the name of Jesus. 
everywhere your gift is needed whoever needs your gift in nigeria i stand as a servant of god i command a connection in the realm of the spirit beginning from tonight 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 in the name of jesus hallelujah i pray for every one of your family members looking for a job my god and my king tonight let testimonies rise from this message no matter how long tonight let someone talk to somebody talk to somebody and talk to somebody and connect them for breakthrough in the name of jesus for your family members i command help us those who will connect them to projects and contracts and opportunities yes they don't merit it but by the power of destiny help us i connect them to the breakthrough for the next level in the name of jesus where you have tried academically i connect you to help us professors who will help you admin staff who will help you admin staff who will help you members in the senate who will help you whether for accommodation whether for your results whether for missing scripts whether for your wife whatever it is in the name of jesus as the senate and the faculty board members meet over your results and your performance may a strange man enter that meeting and advocate for you in the name of jesus anywhere they want to turn down your family members or turn down anything let a strange man come we don't want to know the name let a strange call come let a strange connection come i prophesy it i release it to you in the name of jesus i release testimonies 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 from this breakthrough experience beginning from tonight i command calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us connections with destiny help us they will travel and come and meet you you will meet them on the streets they will come to your homes in the name of jesus you will see them in your dreams god will connect you for every one of your family members that is supposed to be married and they are not married the husbands or the wives they are not in space they are here on earth lord we pray tonight as a family by the power that is in the name of the resurrected christ i pray let help us lead partners to their mates in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus we command supernatural marital connections in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we bind every devil we bind every power that attempts to cause delay we set them free from every curse and every yoke of bondage be released in the name of jesus the ministry of destiny help us all through this week i want you to pray cry out and say lord bring them I believe you will hear fearful testimonies in this place as a result. Tonight I've shown you a very mighty secret. Don't forget it too soon. Hold it. Every time you are praying over something, the answer is in the hands of another person. Stop beating about the bush. Every man and every authority can answer when God calls yours is just to pray that God will connect you hallelujah you're here you're we are going to pray it's just going to be praying in tongues now I want you to find a corner my brother my sister take your life serious in the next five minutes instrumentalists just charge the atmosphere for us blast in tongues and refuse upon Mount Zion and it shall come to pass in that 
day and it shall come to pass in that day in that day in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing please pray pray please pray if you are tired hold the hands of somebody that can agree with you Pray for your destiny. Pray. Enough is enough, oh God. The victory of Christ, the work of Jesus on the cross, cannot be in vain. The substitutionary sacrifice of the Son of the Living God cannot be in vain.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Brothers, I'd like you to pray. The spirit that keeps men in one place. You don't move forward. You don't move backward. You stay. No productivity. Every gentleman here, open your mouth and blast in tongues. Father in the heavens, this is better. Shabbatakatoskata. The yokes, the altars, and everything that time my life, that time my destiny, by the mystery of deliverance, I challenge. I challenge it is upon Mount Zion, the spirit that was failure. Shaka Pesha Pesh, Shaka Pesha Pesh, and the present take it, take it, don't shake it. Hallelujah. Listen. Demons came into being when the Spirit assisted men. So your victory comes into being when the Spirit assists you. He says, I am the God of Bethel. I have seen the oppression that Laban has done. The victory will not just happen. Forget about the physical things. In the realm of the spirit, you are going to cry for divine assistance. I provoke the ministry of angels over every affair of my life. Lift your voice and pray. Cry. Are they not ministering spirits? Are they not ministering spirits? My brothers and sisters, are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister for them that be the heirs of salvation. I call for assistance from heaven. Oh God of Jeshurun, the helper of men, the lifter of men, the helper of men, the lifter of men, the deliverer. Angels on assignment. Angels on assignment. Angels on assignment. Angels on assignment. Judging the wicked. Delivering the prophecy of God concerning my life. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Every attribute of the flesh that gives access to any spirit in my life by the mystery of the blood, I declare that that door is closed forever. Lift your voice and pray. Come on. Lift your voice and pray.
Hallelujah. We are still praying. I tell you, I feel fire in this place. Listen, everything God has shown you, either as a revelation from His Word or as a revelation from the realm of the Spirit, you are going to declare. Jacob did not just see the spotted calves and left them in the realm of the spirit. They had to come and interact. The word must become flesh. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry. Jacob's katabata. Every anointing, every mantle, every mandate, every dimension, the prophetic, the apostolic, prosperity, increase, speed, deliverance that God has shown me. Lord, you showed me victory. I declare, I declare, I declare. It must find expression. Pray. are going to pray listen carefully whether you are an usher or not please if anyone is under the anointing or manifesting around you just help them are we together the very serious prayer we're going to pray now you are going to pray that if by any means there is any spirit entity in my life or around me it's time for you to come out it's time for you to go listen as you pray this prayer, many strange things will start happening to you. Don't worry about it. You just focus on this prayer and pray with all your heart and watch what happens. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that any spirit entity finding expression in my mind in my body around my life hear the word of the Lord I cast you out of my life now lift your voice and pray pray fire is falling pray fire is falling Shabbatakata I cast every spirit, I cast every devil, I cast every spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. My mind, my body, around my life, around Koinonia, in the name of Jesus, around my family. You are married also pray for your family pray for your children i cast every devil
healing fibroid. I'm seeing the Lord healing now. The Lord is healing fibroid. The Lord is healing fibroid in the name of Jesus. I command that devil. The Lord is healing fibroid. Now, the Lord is ministering to me. A mighty deliverance is going to happen now. It's starting with ladies. Any spirit entity that comes in the form of a man and attempts to oppress you in the night, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, let the fire from heaven fall right now and command i command that spirit to go help them right now any spirit entity using the face of anyone to molest you and close doors inside outside i command deliverance now i command deliverance now let the daughters of jacob possess their possessions in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit uncontrolled anger. It's a spirit. It's leading people right now. Uncontrolled anger. It's, a, it's an unusual anger. Rage. It comes, you can see anything and you can do anything. I'm seeing fire in the name of Jesus. Anyone who is a victim of this oppression. Right now in the name of Jesus, I bring you deliverance. I bring you deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uncontrolled anger. I come against it now. Please help her. I'm seeing a vision. And the Lord is asking me to pray on that case. In this vision, I'm seeing someone dream. That's what I'm seeing now. And in that dream, you keep seeing yourself going back either to your old house or to a primary school or writing an exam you are finished. It's a strong spirit of delay. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. Help your wife. Right now in the name of Jesus. At the count of three, the spirit of delay. Hear the word of the Lord. Let God's people go now. One, two, three. I command that spirit. Go now. Go now. Please help them. Go now. This is one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind. No devil should take you back again. I command that spirit. Go now. I cost that spirit now. If there is anyone you know, whether you are here or anyone you know, that for some reason has not been able to take in, in the name of barrenness, whether you are here or you are standing for them, I want you to agree, I want to pray. Let's see the devil that will stop them from taking in. In the name of Jesus, anyone you know and you are standing for, that the devil, I don't care what the medical report is, that the devil has come to make sure that they will not celebrate children. In the name that is above all names, we release children from heaven. In the name of Jesus, we release children from heaven. We open every barren womb. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a group of people. You see, you have dreams frequently. And in the dreams, you see yourself receiving things. And it's something that in the physical you are hoping to receive. But the moment you see it in that dream, it will never happen again. It's an irony. It's like the opposite of what you see in dreams. 
is what happens. The Lord is asking me to deliver those people now. Please help her. Help her. Just stand near your wife so that she doesn't have to fall. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Shakatos, Emprantas Kanasone Hashamariakata, Shakrasko Debakatosa Varekata, Eko Shamama Sanadakata, Reke Teke Teke Teke, Eskamarakatos Kaba, Satia, Satia, Satia Sekenekosa, Prakatos Karikata, in the name that is above all names. I decree and declare from the realm of the spirit, let there be deliverance for you now. Let there be deliverance for you now. Just two more points and we're done. Look at me. If you have seen this pattern I'm about to describe in your family, then I want you to listen carefully. It's always that the future is worse than the past. You never have a situation where you leave certain things and go higher and higher. You look at all your loved ones. They once worked. They once married. They once had children. They once had a house. You are in a situation where the future is never brighter than the past. It's always once upon a time this was happening. I need to crush that devil from your life. Please help them. Once upon a time I was rich. Once upon a time I was married. Once upon a time I was on fire for God. Once upon a time I was a pastor. I had a church. No. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth ever brighter unto the perfect day. When your tomorrow becomes worse than your yesterday, there is a spirit reversing the equation. Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. In the name that is above all names, I declare that any force from hell that is responsible for aborting a glorious tomorrow to take the events of the past and still bring it into your tomorrow right now at the count of three i declare that spirit must let you go one two three let them go now let them go now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please just be patient with me. We will end now. My spirit is heavy. Circles of repeated sicknesses. I want to pray now. It's not a normal thing. Whether it is hepatitis, whether it is a blood related disease, or whether it is every month malaria, every month malaria, every month typhoid, you treat it, it still comes back. Every month headache, every month whatever it is. Hold on, please. The Lord is showing me something. I just saw like a pile of money and then I saw it disappear and the Lord said there are people money physically disappears like lives their life I'm not saying you waste it you can keep 10,000 and come back and find 7,000 and nobody was in that house it's not just money items you can wash clothes and hang it you, you didn't steal it you will come back you will not find it listen well this is a, a deliverance series just allow me to help that lady I'm seeing a lady in a vision now. You were alone. You washed your underwear in the night. By the next day, you didn't find two of them again. It's gone. From that day, something happened in your life in a strange way. Severe menstrual pain is one of the things you started having. Uncontrollable pain. In the name of Jesus, everything the devil has taken from anyone, I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit, let there be restoration now. Let there be restoration now. Let there be restoration now. The Lord is
is showing me someone every time you see someone die in the dream a few weeks later it will happen physically now you have seen your loved ones you saw them last week you saw like a, somebody was announcing to you that so I don't know if it's your mother or something that died if we don't pray for you it's going to happen in the name of Jesus Christ I declare all oh death where is thy sting all oh grave where is thy victory I prophesy right now upon your life by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I command that death to pass over your family I command that death to pass over your family Hallelujah. Just, just let me just talk about two issues. I'm struggling to share what God is showing me now. This has to do with a group of ladies. Listen. There is a lady here. Every time you see yourself in a dream, you are a man, not a woman. That's why I'm struggling to share what I'm saying. Physically, you are a lady. But every time you see yourself in a dream, it's like you are carrying the form of a man. This thing has affected you even in the area of relationship. If a guy looks at you and says, I love you, it's like, it's like, um, it's, it's like you feel as if you are gay. It's, it's like something has numbed the capacity to receive love as a lady because of that encounter it's a demonic thing that I have to pray for you for a very demonic thing I'm seeing like smoke this is strange and then it is it's just like moving around in the air wherever those groups of people are I don't believe it's just one person it's an operation of darkness in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost be free from that demonic siege now be free from that demonic siege now ah, hold on there is a lady a physical person appeared to you not a dream I'm not talking of your dreaming physically physical like you are seeing me like this appeared to you and was having a conversation with you appeared to you and was having a conversation with you and from that conversation your life was never the same again it looked like it was a woman that was appearing and talking to you like revealing to you some secrets that had to do with the past and from that day you started hearing voices even in the afternoon you can sit down and hear like people are discussing i need to pray for you if i don't pray for you very soon they will admit you in the hospital because they'll say you are talking and behaving like somebody who has a psychosomatic condition wherever that person is in the name of jesus i may not call you out because of time but i declare right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that devil that spirit in the name of Jesus be free from it now I was going to pray for repeated cycles of sickness let that be the last let's pray if you know in this place that you find out that certain sicknesses never leave you they keep repeating cycles just place your hand on your chest I'm about to pray it doesn't matter what part of your body and what sickness you just place your hand on your chest I'm going to pray someone will shout under the anointing when that happens the anointing for this healing is not a sickness it's a pattern that God is breaking now the moment that shout happens I will rebuke that and then we are done for the night we will continue the miracle service I will talk about it shortly thank you Jesus just lay your hands there the power of God is looking for one person. There's somebody that will shout. That's the shout. 
right now in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Spirit every pattern of reoccurring infirmity reoccurring sickness whether it's a blood related disease every pattern I say it again of reoccurring sickness reoccurring disease right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I command the spirit responsible lose your hold now 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 hallelujah in this series i gave you an instruction our time is gone i want to give you another one now please listen very carefully I told us we have been doing it. I know a number of you may not have been so faithful. Just try to be consistent. Do it out of revelation. At least 15 minutes in the night, wake up and pray. Pray in the spirit. Declare the victory of Christ. Just forget about whatever dream or whatever experience you are having. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Are we together now? Hallelujah. You're here. You're not born again. Now is the time. For you to have an experience with the Lord Jesus. Or you've given your heart to Jesus. This is the greatest of all breakthroughs. That you start a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight let this be that night. Where you will begin a new walk with the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity. Everybody keep standing. You're here and you've not given your heart to the Lord. Or you've given your heart to the Lord once. But you found yourself derailing in the path of destiny. I'd like you to leave your seat and come out quickly. I want to pray with you. Is there any kind of person like that? Hallelujah. Please don't be afraid. You need to come out, leave your seat and come. Appreciate them. Someone is coming. Appreciate them. Don't remain in your seat. Appreciate them. Another brother is coming. They are coming. Appreciate them. This is the beginning of breakthroughs. Keep coming. Keep coming. Jesus is calling. Enough is enough. Keep appreciating them. They are coming. Thank you for coming. Lord, we celebrate you. Keep coming, brother. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. Sister, God bless you. God bless you. God bless as many of you who are coming. It's the beginning of a new journey. It's the beginning of a new journey. No devil will hold you. No devil will keep you. My sister, God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is why God brought you tonight. Keep coming. The Lord bless you. No matter what the challenge is, keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. The greatest way to activate breakthroughs in your life and to secure a life both in this realm and in the life to come is to give Jesus your heart. No one condemns you. But tonight we want you to start a real journey. I believe that the Holy Spirit brought you out by himself. And I salute you for the courage. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and pray after me, everyone standing. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you tonight unable to help myself I believe that Jesus is Lord over my life I confess my sins and I declare that Jesus is Lord I receive eternal life into my spirit from today I'm born again forward ever backward never Holy Spirit come and live in me make me a great tool in the hands of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now let me pray for you. Father, preserve these ones. You brought them out by your spirit. Preserve them. I pray that their salvation will last. It will be genuine. And Lord, that they will begin to grow from grace to grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse every devil of darkness that will want you to move back into whatever you were doing before you came to the Lord. Let this be a new beginning for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for coming. I want you to follow the ushers quickly. They will have your details. And tomorrow you will be meeting with Pastor Jakes by 7 p.m. Oh, that will not be possible. Monday, on Monday. Monday, 7 p.m. We will remind you. Monday, 7 p.m. You will meet at chapel and will follow you. Please appreciate them. Appreciate them. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Appreciate them. Thank you so much for coming. Very quickly, you're worshipping with us for the first time. 
I'd like you to leave your seat and run out here quickly. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. If you're worshiping with us, appreciate them. They are coming. Come on, run like you know your destiny is opening up in a new and glorious way. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You'll never be the same. I assure you, God brought you here. Jesus is in this place. Appreciate them. Can you celebrate what God is doing? Thank you. Thank you, sisters. Thank you. You'll never be the same. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is Koinonia. Meeting put together by Eternity Network International. How many of you were blessed tonight? You'll never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we prophesy breakthrough. Lord, as a token, give them major breakthroughs in their lives. Let them know that God is at work in this place. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with a fresh hunger for God. We bless you with a fresh hunger. Beyond the breakthroughs that you will receive. A fresh hunger for the things of the Spirit. A fresh hunger for the presence of the Lord. Whatever challenge you came here with is swallowed up tonight. In the name of Jesus, go and experience unlimited breakthroughs by the hands of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, thank you once again for coming.